Welcome back on a beautiful September afternoon in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. David Steele and Jim Yarborough, University of Florida football. The Gators against the Alabama Crimson Tide. And a pretty good following of University of Florida fans have traveled to the fine state of Alabama to watch their Gators take on Gene Stallings' Alabama football club. A ball club that disappointingly lost its season opener last week in Birmingham to Southern Mississippi, 27 to 24. Now there has been a lot of talk in this state this week, Jim Yarborough, about the Alabama Crimson Tide and Coach Gene Stallings. He's under a lot of pressure already, as we pointed out briefly in the pregame. Well, David, Alabama was one of the preseason favorites along with Tennessee and Auburn to win the Southeastern Conference, and they've got a terrific ball club. They just had some terrible problems with uh, interceptions and a muffed punt last uh, weekend. Southern Mississippi was up for the game and uh, put 27 points on the board, beat Alabama 27-24. But I think you can throw last weekend's stats away I think you can certainly throw last year's stats away for both teams. And this afternoon, what we see is what we're going to get. Two new programs, essentially, is what we're talking about with the Stallings era at Alabama and the Spurrier era at the University of Florida. The University of Alabama returned nine starters on offense from last year's ball club that won 10 games under Bill Curry, but only five starters returned on the defensive side. Now, interestingly, that offensive unit, which returned nine starters, still doesn't have nine starters from a year ago because of uh, several injuries. And uh, again, as we, the Alabama Crimson Tide, Jim. As we look at statistics uh, to David, Alabama currently leads the Southeastern Conference after only one game, even though it was a defeat. They didn't give up a lot of total yardage to Southern Mississippi. Again, it was the turnovers, uh, interceptions and such that uh, created havoc for them. But they're outstanding personnel as always. This is uh, my first time that... Uh, Denny Bryant Stadium to see a ball game and uh, this is an exciting afternoon for all of us. A capacity crowd of better than 70,000 on just a beautiful sun splashed afternoon in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. A little cold front moved through. I know 87 degrees doesn't sound much like a cold front but last week when uh, Alabama played Southern Miss in Birmingham the temperature was better than 120 degrees down on the field so it is considerably cooler here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama than it was last week in Birmingham. Series record, as we mentioned earlier, these two ball clubs have been on again, off again rivals in Southeastern Conference football history since the league began play in 1933. In fact, uh, the teams have met only 14 times in SEC play, and Alabama in SEC competition against Florida has a record of 11 and 3. There's All-American defensive end uh, Huey Richardson and the Florida Gators with that outstanding defense, which is ranked third in the nation for the last two years combined, set to go against Alabama. And that defense will be on the field as the game begins because Alabama will receive the football. Alabama won the toss and decided to receive the football. They have extreme confidence in their offense with the seasoned veteran Gary Hollingsworth, who is a senior outstanding performance last year for Alabama leading the way. Alabama's deep men will be Prince Wembley and Lorenzo Cole and Arden Krzyzewski is going to kick off for the Gators who are wearing new white uniforms, the white pants and the blue trim on the side of the pants, the white jerseys and blue numerals and orange trim. Coach Steve Spurrier had wanted to go with the blue pant just for all you fashion uh, conscious <laughs> folks out there in Gatorland, but decided that the navy blue might be a little too hot. I think that was uh, a wise decision. You know, the last weekend we saw a number of players go down with leg cramps because of the humidity. Early in the fall in the Southeastern Conference, the, you got to battle the heat as well as the opponent. And a lot of times it's that conditioning factor that can determine who's got more gas in the tank in the fourth quarter when it uh, counts the most. This is an artificial playing surface here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. And a stadium that was just expanded to seat 70,000, uh, I think just for the start of last season. Well, football is king in the Southeastern Conference, and, and every stadium in the conference is expanded on a regular basis almost every other year, it seems. Gators looking forward to their uh, expansion in the north end zone, uh, I believe, next year. Uh, we saw a record crowd in Gainesville. 
So I'm sure those seats will be a hot commodity when that construction gets underway. Well, the national, natural grass at Florida Field got rave reviews last week. And uh, the Gators look forward to much more continued success on that beautiful natural surface. But now we're underway from Bryant-Denny Stadium. Krzyzewski kicks it deep. Lorenzo Cole from the 11-yard line. Cole across the 20 and is knocked down at the 27-yard line. And up off the bottom of the stack, Monty Groh, number 10, Carlton Miles, number 31. Here's the offense for Alabama, an outstanding backfield led by the Offensive Player of the Year quarterback, Gary Hollingsworth, from a year ago. That freshman tailback, Anderson, on the hot seat today. An offensive line, a veteran group, Roger Schultz, a potential All-American at center. They come to the line of scrimmage in a straight eye formation. And the handoff to the tailback, Anderson. He is going to be hit behind the line of scrimmage, and there are about seven or eight Gators to stop the youngster in his tracks. Godfrey Miles leading the attack right there. Just a tremendous athlete at the new Gator back position as we look at that new attacking Gator defense. Defensive coordinator Jim Bates uh, loves to be on the attack with his defenders, and we saw Godfrey Miles penetrate right there, stop the action in the backfield. And the All-American Fain anchors the secondary. Second down and 11. The tight end, Lamond Russell, in motion. Anderson gets the call again, and about the same result as he crosses the 25 just barely, and then is knocked back once more. Tim that, Falk made the tackle for the Gators. On that play, David, it was Godfrey Miles who maintained control at the line of scrimmage and Fee Bartley right there as well, turning them inside to the Gator pursuit, the interior making the tackle. Excellent job on the first two Alabama offensive efforts by that Gator defense. Now it is third down at 11. Hollingsworth from a shotgun formation. Breaks out of the pocket. There's the football, but Hollingsworth pounces on it at the 20-yard line. Great coverage by the Gators secondary. Hollingsworth had plenty of time to unload the ball, but couldn't find an open receiver. Alabama getting nothing done on their first attempt here this afternoon at Bryant-Denny Stadium. Dominated by the Gators on the first three plays, but again, Hollingsworth has no open receivers downfield. It looks like Brad Culpepper kicks the ball away from the quarterback. Stan Moss, a transfer from Texas A&M, punts. Terrence Barber has it knocked away from him as he failed to make a fair catch call, but the ball rolls out of bounds and will be the Gator football at the 41-yard line. Terrence nice Barber on the coverage there by Matthew Pine. Terrence Barber, again, a senior wide receiver, has good hands, but he muffed that one out of bounds. Fortunately, the sideline was near. Gator offense led by that sophomore quarterback, Shane Matthews, who had such an outstanding game last weekend. A veteran offensive group. 59 career starts for that offensive line combined. And there is the hero of last week's offensive performance. No question about that. Sophomore quarterback Shane Matthews out of Pascagoula, Mississippi. But as we all know, one game does not a season make. Here's another opportunity on the road for the young quarterback opening up his SEC battle. One setback behind Matthews. Dexter McNabb, who gets the pitch, splits a couple of defenders. McNabb on his feet to the 41-yard line of Alabama. David, look at the block by Glenn Neely, the offensive left tackle. He not, knocks his defender back about five yards at the line of scrimmage. That is a gain of 19 against the Alabama defense. George Thornton, a veteran member, a senior out of Montgomery, Alabama. Eric Curry, another potential all-star candidate. Solid group of linebackers led by Spencer Hammonds, a fifth-year senior. First down for the 41. Matthews. Almost had it picked off. A very fine defensive play by Stacy Harrison, the junior out of Atlanta, Georgia. The strong safety. One of the younger members, or more inexperienced members of that Alabama secondary, Ephraim Thomas, an all-Southeastern Conference performer from a year ago, and Charlie Gardner started each and every game a year ago for Alabama in that secondary. Nice job by that secondary. Uh, Gator wide receivers uh, were covered. Matthews had to hustle out of the pocket. 
and the ball was knocked down in the secondary. Second down. Matthews goes down. It's a loose ball, and Alabama's got it. Steve Webb recovers the fumbled football. And there's the kind of pressure that Shane Matthews never saw last week against Oklahoma State. Gene Stallings uh, is a defensive-oriented football coach. His history has been on the defensive side of the line of scrimmage, and right there he decided to send them after the young quarterback and just uh, a lot of pressure on Matthews, who gives the football up on the turnover as William Gaines, number 94, strips loose the football. So Alabama will have the football at Florida's 39-yard line after Thornton shook it loose and Webb pounced on it. You've got to give a lot of credit to George Thornton for making Matthews cough that football up, and Alabama's got it in Florida territory still early in the first period. This past season... Uh, that game did set a lot of precedents for the uh, decade of the 90s. I think leading up to that, uh, going back in the 80s and having the difficulties that uh, existed at that time, uh, I think everybody was pointing to the 90s and hoping for a better future. And, of course, when Coach Spurry came in and uh, got you know everything going, it was a tremendous thing. And I, I feel very fortunate that I had the opportunity to be a part of it. Well, I just think, you know, he just wanted to emphasize, even when he got the job, was, you know, if we want to be a winning football program here, we have to win games on the road. And, uh, you know, we didn't really prepare any differently. We just focused that it was going to be a loud environment. Uh, we had to, you know, stay mentally focused. Welcome back to Bryant-Denny Stadium. Florida nothing, Alabama nothing. The Crimson Tide has just recovered a Florida fumble. And has first and ten at the Gator 39-yard line. A new tailback for Alabama, Derek Lassick, a sophomore. And this is the give to the fullback, Kevin Turner, the junior out of Prattville, Alabama, who picks up about four yards on first down. Last week, the Gators were extremely stingy in yards allowed on first down. Gave, a, gave up just uh, under three yards per first down against Oklahoma State. And that can really set you up defensively when... You deny your opposition on first down. Lassick's uh, playing with some injury problems as well. Look at the shotgun again. And a shovel pass to Lassick. And Lassick is hit by Jerry Odom at the 33-yard line. This is a young man that took uh, Saran Stacy's place initially, but he's battling injury problems himself. He's not full speed, but he's an excellent runner at 5'11", 195, a sophomore. 394 yards last year. That shovel pass play tailor-made against a quick pursuing defense. Big third down. Third down and three. Again, Alabama works from a shotgun. Looks like he checked off at the line of scrimmage. Going to run for it himself, and he's in big trouble. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage, let alone the first down marker. Tim Pauk, the super quick inside linebacker, and Jerry Odom. Made the stop. That will bring up fourth down. One of the top place kickers in America will come on and try and give Alabama an early lead. An excellent job done by the Gator defenders on the outside. Huey Richardson, Mark Murray with their speed on the outside, forcing Hollingsworth for the second time this afternoon to have to step up. And that time there was no place for him to go. So nice job by the Gators with their back to the wall. This would be a 53-yard field goal if Philip Doyle can knock it through. Almost blocked Doyle, who has uh, tremendous leg strength. Just came up short on that one. And Alabama comes away empty after getting the football at the Gator 39-yard line. They were unable to pick up a first down. And the Gators have dodged more than a bullet, more like a cannonball here in the first period. We'll be right back. I think our players went into it uh, thinking that, you know, Alabama was one of those teams that was always a nemesis for Florida. I remember the 40 to almost 40 to nothing, something like that, when I was being recruited, and uh, Alabama just swamped us. Um, but that game, I think I, we had a lot of intensity, a lot of guys yearning to win against a team that you know had all the 
the prestige of college football. And our coaching staff went into that game encouraging our players to, to give it all they had to perform at a high level. And uh, just the floor of the game, uh, we felt confident that if we just kept playing hard, we would have a chance to win. I don't think there was any doubt in the minds of our players that we could win that game. Dow fans. Florida's offense huddled up. They'll have the football at the 34-yard line. That tremendous effort last week seems long forgotten now in the first period here because uh, this is an altogether different situation than the Gators faced last week against Oklahoma State. Alabama, even though they lost their opener last week to Southern Mississippi, outgained the Southern Miss 440 yards to one, about 150 in total offense. Turned the ball over four times last week in critical situations muffed the punt which also cost them and uh, you know you and I Jim were talking before the game a lot like the old Miss opener last year for Florida when uh, the Gators were clearly the better team but came out on the short end of the stick on the scoring board Gator football at the 34 yard line this time a runner is out of the eye Willie McClendon may have gotten a yard out to the 35 before he was hit hard by linebacker Derek Oden, the sophomore out of Tuscaloosa, homegrown product. McClendon played just a little bit better than a half of last week's game, and that's what he did. Eric Rett, the backup tailback, actually got more yards than did McClendon last week. That draw play was Oden's responsibility, and he refused to be blocked and was right there to make the play. Second down and eight. There's another delay, and again, not much success. That's big Eric Curry, the sophomore defensive end out of Thomasville. I think what you're seeing Alabama do, David, is uh, stunt and send those linebackers. Right now, the linebackers aren't going, but they're stunning inside. And that is creating confusion with some of the blocking schemes. It's working well for Alabama on defense right now. It is third down and eight. Hughes has good protection, throws into a crowd, and it is incomplete. Excellent coverage by John Sullins, a linebacker who was man to man against tight end Kirk Kirkpatrick. And the Gators will punch the ball away for the first time this afternoon. Now, right now, this battle is completely even. Both teams fighting each other inch for inch out on that turf this afternoon. Neither team willing to to give an inch to the uh, to the other. Jason Haley, the redshirt freshman out of Hobart, Oklahoma, will punt the ball for the Gators. And deep to receive is Jeff Marshall, who fields the ball at the 21. Got away from one man, but is tripped up out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Pretty good kick by Jason Haley. He kicked one last week for 47 yards, and that one backs Alabama up to its 26. No score from Tuscaloosa. I've said many times was one of the biggest uh, wins in the 12 years uh, that I was at Florida. And, and the reason it was one of the biggest is because it was different than so many uh, Florida games. Uh, so often the Gators had very good teams, maybe a little bit better than the other, the other guys, uh, but something would happen that we would lose a game. From the get-go, he, he made it known that we were going to compete for the SEC title. It wasn't like, uh, you know, apparently, you know, not apparently, but Florida had never officially won one um, up to that point. And he said, there's no reason why we can't make that happen. And he told us to believe in ourselves and to believe in this is going to happen. And it did that year. We got it stripped. However, we did win the conference. And that confidence and that believing in ourselves that we could win the conference is what he brought in. Alabama football, the Crimson Tide at their own 26-yard line. Hollingsworth fires quickly to his former high school teammate Craig Sanderson. That is Sanderson's first reception of this season. He caught 21 in his first two years as a wide receiver in Alabama. Gators in a three deep zone right there and Sanderson having plenty of room on the outside as he merely took four or five yard uh, went four or five yards down the field then ran a 45 degree angle towards the middle and the ball was delivered. Almost enough for a first down. The freshman tailback 
Anderson runs head long into safety Will White, but gets the first down for Alabama. There you see Huey Richardson on the outside fighting to maintain containment right there as he should do, but Alabama needing only a yard or two to pick up the first down, and the young tailback does it. Fee Bartley on the tackle. This Anderson, a small back at 5'7", 175. The freshman gets the call again and barrels it out across the 40 to about the 42-yard line. Let's check in with Steve Babick on the sideline. Steve? David and Jim, it's interesting to notice that when Gary Hollinsworth is getting a signal from the sidelines and he has that cheat sheet on his left forearm, then he goes to the huddle and calls the play. So different philosophies. Some coaches will signal the signs in and the coach or the quarterback will make the play call. Some quarterbacks look on the forearm for the play, I guess. Back upstairs. Let's see what's written on the arm of Gary Hollingsworth here on second down and seven from the shotgun. The blitz, Culpepper crashing through, and the pass is incomplete. Actually, it was not a blitz. Culpepper just lost his man. That's right. He got in there so fast, we thought he was maybe a defensive back on a blitz, but he just simply beat the uh, blocking attempt so rapidly right there. He was in the face of Hollingsworth and destroyed that play from the get-go. Culpepper, very experienced uh, leader of that Florida defense. Huey Richardson complimenting the play of Culpepper last week. Huey Richardson getting a lot of publicity, but he says Brad Culpepper is extremely underrated. Another third down play for the Crimson Tide. Hollingsworth with time. Sanderson again with the reception. And he stepped out of bounds at the 41-yard line of the Gators. Fee Bartley man for man right there on Sanderson, and Sanderson got the one or two steps on him at the left of your screen. You're gonna see Hollingsworth looking for Sanderson. Bartley's got him, but it's about a three-yard cushion there, and Sanderson just barely steps out of bounds after the missed tackle. Hollingsworth is now three for three. In the passing department, he was no better than 50% last week against Southern Mississippi with three interceptions and no touchdown pass. But what a great year he had in 89 for the Crimson Tide. An excellent leader at that quarterback position. The fullback, Houston, across the 40 to the 38-yard line of Florida. You're seeing a nice mix on uh, offense by the Crimson Tide right now, passing when they want to, running when they want to. They're mixing that Gator defense up. The Gators aren't sure what they might see, mixing a little play action in there. Excellent job by the Crimson Tide offense on this drive. Second down and eight. Anderson and Houston in the backfield for Hollingsworth. The tight end, Lamont Russell. Russell down at the 31-yard line. It will be close to another Alabama first down. And Will White made the stop for the Gators. There's the All-Southeastern Conference tight end. Will White, the free safety right there, man for man on Lamont, Lamont Russell. The young man caught 51 passes uh, for the Crimson Tide last year. Excellent speed from the tight end position. There you see Fee Bartley blitzing from the outside, but Hollingsworth picks him up. The ball pops into the air, but I think an Alabama player was there to fall on it. He did. And it's a first down for the Crimson Tide. One Bama player was in the area, three or four Florida players, but the Alabama guy got it. It was recovered by Steve Buskey. Let's take another look. This one almost brought rain. Buskey, a backup tight end. Heads up play. He's hustling, making the block. He sees the ball. He's the only tied ball player near it. Three or four Gators near the ball, but the Tide uh, picks up the first down. On the fumble. B. Bartley almost caught it in the air. First down from the 27. Anderson. Scissored. Near the line of scrimmage. Mike Brandon seen some action for the Gators. Number 97, Huey Richardson making the tackle. Mike Brandon starting at uh, defensive tackle along with Brad Culpepper on that front four. 
Gators playing four down linemen trying to attack the offense, penetrate the line of scrimmage. Sanderson in motion. Dumps it to Russell. And Russell is near another first down. I think he's got it. Down around the 16-yard line of the Gators. Throw heads up play by Hollingsworth and Russell right there. Gators sending some linebackers on the blitz, but the, the tight end heads up. Hollingsworth saw it coming, dumped it off to him immediately. Kid was an all-SEC all performer last year for the Tide. Now he's an outstanding player. He's caught a pass in 19 consecutive games now for Alabama and has moved into the number three spot in all-time Alabama career receptions. First down. Anderson's got great speed, but he'll not turn the corner as Jimmy Spencer is there to deny at about the 17 or 18-yard line. Just a terrific job uh, all by himself out there, Jimmy Spencer. He sees a tailback coming at him that uh, can run like a jackrabbit. But Spencer was not to be denied, makes the tackle in the open field. A big play by the cornerback right there as we look at Anderson, who a dangerous runner with no yards at this point in time on four attempts. He carried three times last week for a total of 12 yards. A true freshman, not a redshirt freshman. He was playing high school ball in Huntsville just a year ago. From the 15. Hollingsworth throws it for the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Craig Sanderson. And what looked like was going to be a busted play, the Crimson Tide has taken the lead, 6-0. You got to give that guy and number 14 all the credit right there because that play had broken down, Jim. Yeah, I think there might have been a busted coverage also in the secondary, uh, but... Uh, Jimmy Spencer was all by himself out there, and Hollingsworth finding Sanderson under tremendous pressure. Hollingsworth was under tremendous pressure right there, but comes up with a touchdown throw. Doyle for the extra point. It's automatic. And with 3.55 to play in the first period, Alabama has just taken a 7 to nothing lead. A very impressive drive by the Crimson Tide. They mixed in... A running game with a passing game, but primarily did the damage through the air. Last week, Oklahoma State had some success in throwing the ball on the Florida Gators, so let's take another look at the touchdown pass from Hollingsworth to his former high school teammate. And Hollingsworth can't find his primary receivers under a lot of pressure. Actually, Mark Murray has him around the waist, but there's Sanderson in the corner, and Jimmy Spencer just can't get there in time. Spencer seeing his first extensive action as a starter for the Gators at the cornerback position. One way to beat a Steve Spurrier coach team, David, is to keep the ball yourself. And that's what Alabama did on that brilliant drive. Chewing up the clock and getting points as well. The Gators have yet to get their offense organized in this one against a swarming Alabama defense. Florida has freshman Pete Archie Deep to return the Alabama kick alongside Monty Duncan. There's Philip Doyle, one of the premier players at his position in college football today. The senior out of Birmingham unloads, and it's going to be the freshman Archie from near the five. Archie has nowhere to go. They cornered him in down on the near sideline and put him down at about the 18 or 19 yard line. Let's take a look at Alabama's last scoring drive, which has given the Crimson Tide a seven nothing lead here with 3.51 left in the first period. 73 yards in 12 plays, using up five minutes on the clock. Very impressive. Sanderson's third touchdown reception in his career. And Hollingsworth, his first touchdown pass of the season. From the 19-yard line. Matthews cannot connect with McClendon. 
Excellent coverage by the linebacker, Derek Oden. Number 56 was all over Willie McClendon coming out of the backfield. And he had man-for-man -man coverage right there, and McClendon did have about half a step, but excellent job by Alabama again on first down. Florida had a lot of success last week on first down, averaging about eight yards on every first down attempt, but I don't think you're going to see that happen this afternoon. Not so far. Play action. Kirkpatrick is open. There's a Florida first down out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Stacy Harrison made the tackle. Kirkpatrick last week caught four of Shane Matthews' passes. The well, senior tight end. We're seeing two of the best tight ends in the conference, uh, maybe in the nation, in Kirk Kirkpatrick and Lamon Russell in terms of receiving capabilities. Kirk Kirkpatrick has to be an important part of that Gator offense if they're going to move the ball down the field. That gives the Gator wideouts opportunities to get, get open when the tight end is so effective. Dexter McNabb was hit by nose tackle Byron Holbrooks after a gain of a couple of yards on the play. I think that was the same play that the Gators picked up about 12, 15 yards on on their first attempt, but right there, uh, their first play of the game, but right there it didn't work. Barna coach Steve Spurrier trying to figure out a way to unscramble this Alabama defense. He has been stymied throughout the first period. Matthews dumps it to McNabb. McNabb is near the first down marker at about the 41. This will be close. That's, that's a very effective play because Dexter McNabb has uh, blitz pickup responsibilities, but once he takes care of his duties or sees that he doesn't have to block a blitzing defender, he sneaks off and becomes a safety valve, and right there, uh, the quarterback was able to find him. It worked properly in terms of being the safety valve, and the Gators almost or did, in fact, pick up the first down. Back-to-back -back first downs for the Gator offense. Wholesale substitutions. Alonzo Sullivan now a wide receiver. Terrence Barber has also checked in, along with tight end Greg Keller. That's the fullback, Kelvin Randolph. Another fresh set of legs. Brings it out across the 45 to about the 47 or 8-yard line. Pretty good yardage on first down. Nose tackle, Robert Stewart. Made the tackle for Alabama. Yeah, that's power football right there, picking up seven yards, going right up the gut on first down. Excellent job by the big, strong Gator offensive line right there. First time they really pushed Alabama back consistently uh, since the opening drive. Fullback Dexter McNabb getting some medical attention. Tailback Eric Rett will have another Florida first down to about the 46-yard line of the Crimson Tide. Charlie Gardner, the free safety, made the stop on young Eric Rett. Eric Rett uh, came out of last week's ball game as the leading rusher for the Gators, actually carried the ball more than Willie McClendon did. He's got a lot of talent right here, and if it's not for the tackle by Gardner, uh, Rett's in the end zone. Three consecutive first downs for the Gators on this offensive possession. Rett falls forward for a couple of yards. There really wasn't much running room up there, but he fell across the 45. Spencer Hammond, the veteran linebacker, made the tackle. Well, you can hear those crack, cracking shoulder pads and, and headgears up here, can't you? These kids are really going after it, and uh, you have to be able to play power football and get the respect of the opponent before uh, your passing game will open up as effectively as you want it to, and right now the Gators are just trying to power the ball at Alabama. Second down. Oh, no flag, although Greg Keller thinks there should be one. The tight end was the intended receiver. Very close to being a pass interference play. I think the ball might have been tipped just the moment before Keller gets hit. It looks like it's possibly interference as you see the twisting and looping up front. Yeah, the ball's yeah. tipped, and uh, so... The receiver's fair game at that that's point. That's right. Excellent call by the officials. Alabama gun looping and twisting and... Gaming inside, trying to put pressure on the young quarterback. Look at the hit right in the face. Delivered there by Alabama. Penalty flag is down. Matthews is in trouble. Now he just throws it away. 
Let's see what the yellow flag is about. It's going to be against Alabama for offsides. That will now, Coach make Stallings it about third down and two. Got to be disappointed with that, putting a lot of pressure on that play, an excellent job by his defense, but because one of the defenders was offside, the Gators, instead of getting shut down on that play, pick up five yards via the penalty. A whole lot different looking at third and seven and third and two. Yeah, that uh, gives the Gators an excellent chance to keep this drive alive. The Gators have Randolph and Wrecked in the backfield. Let's see if Alabama crowds that line of scrimmage on this third and short. Now they're playing straight up. Again, they almost jumped offside. They give it to Rhett. And Rhett, I believe he's got the first down. Near the 35. He just needed to get shy of the 36. He's got it with a couple of extra feet to spare. First and 10, Florida. That's four consecutive first downs now with time running out in the first period and Alabama leading seven to nothing. Florida trying to answer Alabama's excellent drive with a drive of their own. Eric Rett picking up that first down, glancing off the tackle right there. A lot of times outstanding runners can pick up that extra foot or two by twisting their body or glancing off the tackles, and that's exactly what Eric Red did. Now, Coach Spurrier saying, what is this timeout? What's going on here? You're, you're stopping my momentum. My guys are going. We got them on the ropes. Now you're giving them a break. That's what Steve's thinking. You know, once you really get things going for you on offense, you, you know, you're hot. You want to you wanna keep on a roll. And he's saying, what's going on? Give us a ball. Alabama defenders are saying, thank you. I get a chance to Get a breather here for 15, 30 seconds. Trey Everett, the intended receiver, he can't get to the football in the end zone. Oh, Everett almost did a tremendous job of lulling Greg Teague to sleep. He stopped for a second and then bounced into the end zone, but the ball was a bit overthrown. And that is the end of the first period from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, with our first period score of the Crimson Tide, seven the Gators, nothing. We'll be right back on Sports Channel. We had their number for a little while. Um, they had, of course, um, beaten beaten us the year before at a last-minute play by Shane Wasden, caught, caught a touchdown from Reggie Slack. Um, so to be able to get some sweet revenge and really dominate their offense. We had done really well the year before with, without much offensive help. However, this year we dominated their, their offense and we had tremendous amount of offensive help. In, in the years uh, prior to Steve coming and Coach Spurrier coming to Florida, you know, we'd had uh, some tough defeats, one being Auburn, uh, last play of the game uh, the year before. So we'd really never been able to go into a difficult arena and come away with a victory. Florida had struggled uh, the previous years to win SEC road games and if we wanted to compete and win conference championships that's the one thing we had to do is, is beat a quality opponent in, in their own backyard and we went out to Alabama and did it. We have played one period from Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa Alabama. The Crimson Tide leads the Florida Gators seven to nothing and sophomore quarterback Shane Matthews is beginning to get a feel for what's going on here and his Southeastern Conference football debut. He has loosened up that throwing arm a bit here in the latter part of the first period. Let's go down on the sideline uh, real quickly to Steve Babick. Steve? I know there was some concern on the Florida sideline. Folks did not see Dexter McNabb in the back, but they saw Randolph at the fullback position. Nothing to worry about. Dexter McNabb was just getting an ankle retape. In fact, he's back in the game right now as the Gators get ready for their offensive series. Back upstairs. The Gators are second down from the 35-yard line of Alabama. This drive began back at the 19. Alonzo Sullivan had to turn his body back toward the quarterback and make a twisting, lunging catch at the 29-yard line. Had the pass been thrown a little more accurately, Sullivan may have had a chance to pick up a few more yards, but it took all of his energy just to bring that one in. Lonzo Sullivan was dragging in that area, vacated by the dropping linebackers right there, and did come up with the excellent catch. But he Matthews. was wide open on his dragging route. 
Matthews uh, was 0 for his first three. On the draw, McClendon has nowhere to go. He was hit back there in the backfield by Byron Holbrooks. The senior nose guard out of Haleyville, Alabama. Coach Spurrier trying to cross Alabama up here with the draw action, but Holbrooks smells it out early. Willie McClendon has no chance. That's just an occasion where the defense anticipated correctly right there and stuffed the play in the backfield. This would be a 47-yard effort by Arden Krzyzewski. The kick is no good. It would have been his longest, and that is the first kick that Krzyzewski has missed as a Florida Gator. He was perfect both in field goals and in point afters until that one right there. So Krzyzewski comes up short on a 47-yard attempt. He had a shot at it, too. The ball was kicked accurately. He just didn't have the strength in his leg to get it there, but it was right in the middle. Krzyzewski now for his career, 15 out of or rather 9 out of 10 in field goals, a perfect 15 out of 15 in extra point attempts. So the Gators keep the football for a long period of time, reel off four consecutive first downs, but come up with no points. And the Alabama Crimson Tide take over at their own 31. Fumble. Classic the ball? the ball carrier, and it is loose on the artificial surface. Who's got it? Florida's got it, I think. No official signal yet. The way the celebration's going, I think Florida got it. Yep. Lassick popped it up, and the Gators have taken possession at the 29 of Alabama. Let's see who hits the Lassick in the backfield if we get a shot at a replay. Here he comes. He's going to come right at you. He's going to get stripped by, is it Huey Richardson? No, he never had the handle. Huey was fighting off the defender, but Lassick just never had the handle. It looked like he ran into number 50, his own offensive guard, Chris Robinette. And Robinette may have kicked it out of his hand. Great field position, great opportunity early in the second period for the Florida Gators. Matthews in big trouble, but McClendon makes the catch at the 21 of Alabama. Now, the thing you got to like about Shane Matthews is that he does not panic even though he was scrambling he was scram scrambling under control and threw that ball with a lot of poise giving it the loft that it needs to get to McClendon over the linebackers and the close coverage right there but just a nice pass delivered on the run by the young Gator quarterback Shane Matthews what could have been a disaster winds up the seven yard game Dexter McNabb Ankle retaped. Well, plunges to the 20. Talking about that, you look at Gary Hollingsworth. He turned a disaster into a touchdown. So uh, those things do happen when you have quarterbacks who have the poise that's required to perform under the heat of the battle when they're under pressure. Florida coaches in the press box here on the near side of Bryant Denny Stadium, lined up. Trying to come up with the right call on third down and one. Matthews tries to quarterback sneak it for the first down. He had a good full yard to go, and I'm not sure if he got it. Yeah, this will be a big call here in Coach Spurrier's young career as the head coach at the University of Florida. What's he going to do? It's going to be less than a foot if they didn't make it. It might be that the Gators were looking at it as a two-down situation. They did not get the first down. They're about... What, a, what appear to be about five or six inches short. He's going to call timeout, and he's disappointed that his tight ends weren't ready to go. I think he might have had two plays in mind to pick up that foot, but uh, he didn't have the substitutes ready. Gators call timeout, threatening early in the second period from Tuscaloosa. time um, Spurrier was uh, was still unproven I mean nobody uh, you, you know you got to remember that now it's easy to look back and see what uh, what greatness um, he, he, he had what what greatness the football team experienced for a, 
a decade or better, but at that time, uh, there was still a lot of unknowns. You know, you weren't sure if, uh, if Florida could go in Alabama and win a game. You weren't sure about Spurrier's philosophy and uh, absolutely certain that the Gators could, you knew they were going to have a great offense, but could they have a defense that could hold an Alabama team? McNabb and McClendon, the Big Mac backfield. Lined up in the eye behind quarterback Shane Matthews. They pitch it to McClendon. And McClendon stumbles, but he should have enough for the first down. It's quite close. Alabama says he didn't get it. He never really looked like he had the thrust that he wanted. He kind of lost his balance. Uh, but where did the knee go down? Where's the mark? That's the critical thing. It's extremely close. Well, Florida signaling. Florida players signal he's got it. Alabama players signal that he didn't. I wonder why. <laughs> There's a debate. Let's settle it right now. Oh, my goodness, look. Boy, is that close. He did not. That's how close it was. He just never had his feet up under him. He, he gets, when he makes this cut right there, he's stumbling. Now he's not running, he's stumbling. And he just touched down short of the first down marker. Here we see another shot at it. Pitch to the tailback. There's Bromley trying to get outside. McNabb makes the tack. He actually stumbles on uh, McNabb's back there. Oh, a missed opportunity. And Alabama's with the football at its own 19, leading 7 to nothing, with 11.59 to play in the second period. Setting up a reverse with Sanderson. Fee Bartley is there, but Sanderson runs right past it. Odom chased him out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Sanderson showed some excellent speed on the corner. This, you could see it coming. And it looked like the Gators had people in position to make the play, but couldn't execute the final tackle. Now, Fee Bartley has honorable intentions, but his legs won't move. And Sanderson literally runs right by him down the sideline. That's an excellent call on first down by the Crimson Tide. Caught the Gators by surprise. 19 yards on the play. He caught the ball, did Russell, but then fumbled it. And who's got it? He might have got it back. Yep. At the 47, 48-yard line of Florida, LeVon Russell caught it, and then turned to cut up field, dropped it, but got it back for Alabama. That ball, when it bounces around today, is bouncing back to Alabama as he has it, loses the handle, gets the hit by Monty Grow. Gators all around the ball, but Lamont Russell comes back up with it. Now what have we got? Marking one off against the Crimson Tide. Now they're calling it an incomplete pass. And that's a bad call. He caught yeah, that football. Like he, did. he clearly caught that football. I can't believe they're not arguing more about that. Well, with the naked eye, it looked like he did. And then... Uh, no, well... I don't know. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't have control. It's that's a close one, but uh, nonetheless, they back him up. Initially, I thought he clearly had yeah. it. On second review, though, I think, uh, I think it was a good call. Brad Culpepper is offside. Let's see if he was drawn or just over anxious. Big Roger Schultz, uh, outstanding offensive center. Yeah. Hollingsworth is getting a beep and a bob there with his head, and uh, that's effective on occasion, but if he tries to get too cute with that, the referee's not going to call that play, or he'll call it against Alabama. Uh, but a smart quarterback on occasion can't get away with that, and he baited Brad Culpepper into jumping prematurely right there. Hollingsworth, an unattractive two or three yard carry. Quarterback try and make sure he does not injure himself. Took a pretty early dive on that run. And you can't blame him when you're looking at what's coming right at you out there in the open field. Well, I think you also know what you can do and what you can't do. And he knows he cannot run, so he didn't try, you know. Look at that completion percentage for Hollingsworth. Having a much better day than he did last week against Southern Mississippi. Big third down play for Alabama. The pass is incomplete, I think, at the 45-yard line. I think it one hopped up into the hands of 
the receiver Donnie Finkley. Finkley. We'd have to see a replay, but I am pretty sure that what I saw was a ball that didn't make it all the way into his hand. I think the umpire on the inside had a better view than the outside official, and the umpire's going to run over and say, hey, I see the ball skip, and he's going to make the call, and that's the play. Right there, the, uh, the official on the outside runs up and marks it, but the umpire says, no, that's not good. Stan Moss has kicked once for 38 yards. This is his second try of the afternoon. Terrence Barber from the 10. All the way back to the 11. Outstanding coverage by the Alabama punt coverage team. John Clay on that time. Gators backed up in their own end of the field, trailing 7-0 in the second quarter from Tuscaloosa. We'll be right back. football in its own 11-yard line. Eric Rett. Good yardage on first down. Out to the 18. Gain of about seven. Oh, that's a critical play, David, when you're deep in your own territory and uh, the opponent is fired up. They have the lead and they, they're coming off that uh, ball trying to stuff you and the Gators knock them back and pick up eight yards with an excellent run on the outside corner by Eric Rett. Rhett, the number two Gator tailback behind Willie McClendon, having himself a good first half in this game. Ten minutes left in the second period. Second down and short. Matthews finds a secondary receiver. He'll be about a yard short of a first down. Kirk Kirkpatrick makes the catch. Byron Sneed, a linebacker out of Alexandria, Virginia. Made the stop for Alabama. A lot of second string defenders on the field right now for Alabama on a very warm afternoon. Well, traditionally in the Southeastern Conference, the uh, teams that are making a run for the championship have some depth and uh, are not concerned about sending in second line players on occasion, especially when you have the opponent backed up in his own territory. This time the Gators have the first down as Rhett is out to the 25-yard line. That's a big first down for the Florida Gators. An intelligent move by the running back right there. Instead of diving into the masses of bodies that were crunched at the line of scrimmage, he just darted to the outside. That's something you can't teach, and uh, great running backs have that ability. It's nice to see Eric Rhett do that. He just didn't simply get airborne and pick up the first down. He was looking for more. Rhett, a redshirt freshman out of Pembroke Pines, MacArthur High School. Matthews has Ernie Mills open, and Mills makes the catch for another first down to the 39-yard line. Ephraim Thomas, the All-Southeastern Conference cornerback, made the stop. David, I think that's really one of the few times this afternoon you've seen the Gators hit their primary receiver. Uh, I think it's the first catch by a wide receiver today. Generally, he's been going to his safety valves or the second or third choice. Right there, his first choice was open, and they're going to have to have that happen to move the ball down and uh, score against this tough Alabama defense. You've got to hit that primary receiver on occasion. McClendon, nice cut back to the inside. He was tripped up by the linebacker, or rather the defensive end, Eric Curry, number 80. But got a couple of more yards after that. Gain of about five. Florida first-year head coach Steve Spurrier in his first Southeastern Conference game as a head coach. The last time he was here, in Tuscaloosa was 1964, and he was the starting quarterback for a Florida team that lost a close game. Clemens had a tough go of it from that tailback spot today so far. But he holds on to the football that time and will be close to another Florida first down out near the 49-yard line. Gardner made the stop for Alabama. Once again, you see the Gator tailback, the McClendon, check his responsibility, see if he's supposed to pick up anyone on the blitz, then look immediately for the football under tremendous pressure. Uh, Shane Matthews dumps it off to his tailback. Again, the safety valve. Just an excellent play by both individuals there. Just under seven and a half minutes to play in the second quarter. Oh! The right tackle, Mark White, moved. Oh, that's a tough play for the big tackle, Mark Whitey. 
thinks he knows what the snap count is, but he's obviously a little early right there. Third and inches. Now it's going to be third and a healthy five. Well, there's not much doubt about what that player was with White angling in on a low angle to block the defensive end. They were going to pitch it to the tailback and try and pick up that half a foot for a first down. But now you're looking at third down and six. The pass is underthrown, intended for Terrence Barber. And it will be fourth down for the Gators. Mark McMillan had good coverage. Actually, one of the few poorly thrown passes we've seen Shane Matthews make right there. He was going for his wide receiver. Also had the tight end, Kurt Patrick, who was open, dragging across, but unable to deliver the football. Jeff Marshall is deep to return this punt. Jason Haley. Kicks it away. And the fair catch is made, and there's contact made also, and a penalty flag goes down. Del Spear a bit too aggressive. Well, he wasn't sure if he saw the uh, signal or not, but it was clearly made. There he's waving it off. You cannot touch him. You cannot touch him. And one, one wave of the arm is all he got, but apparently that was enough. 33-yard kick. And Alabama's going to have good field position after they mark off this penalty against the Florida Gators. We'll be right back from Bryant-Denny Stadium. Last week, the Florida Gators at this time had rolled up a couple of hundred, maybe even 300 yards in total offense by this time in the ball game against Oklahoma State. But look at that scoreboard right now. Big goose egg on the board against Alabama, a team that's playing some great defense here in the first half, especially in big play situations against the Gators. Let's check down on the field to Steve Babbitt. Yes, uh, uh, thanks, guys. Uh, one thing that you have to keep in mind that at home, Shane Matthews was able to call the cadence over a crowd noise that wasn't, you know, against the Gators. Obviously, down here, the crowd noise is going to affect the cadence, and that's why you're not seeing, like, a no-huddle offense. So let's go back upstairs. Hand off to the tailback. Anderson. Anderson gets very little, but may have picked up a yard or two out across the 30-yard line. We'll call it second down at 8. 6.27 left in the first half. Alabama. The only score of the day, a touchdown pass from Hollingsworth to Sanderson. Well, you got a peek at big uh, Terrell Chapman there, the outstanding right offensive tackle, a 300-pounder, returning all-conference performer. The fullback, Kevin Turner, who has outstanding hands. One of their leading pass receivers of a year ago. Caught three last week against Southern Mississippi. Makes the catch for Alabama. It's going to be third down, and still the Crimson Tide needs a significant offensive play to pick up a first down. They're at their own 34. They need to go to about the 39. Hollingsworth. Finds Wembley, and they got enough for the first down to the 45-yard line. That's Wembley's first catch of the afternoon, and he's quite pleased with himself. Prince Wembley turns Pete Archie around right here. Pete Archie in coverage, and Wembley gets him going backwards and then breaks back just beyond the mark where he knew he had to get to pick up the first down. He knew exactly where he wanted to make that break. He had Archie leaning, thinking he was going deep, and then cuts back, and the ball's delivered by Hollingsworth. Oh! Ooh, what, a, <laughs> what a hit there as Hawk and Miles got there very quickly, and then a third Gator uh, just put the final touches on a huge hit. Fee Bartley, 44. Yeah. Watch him come in from the back. Uh, you'll see there's Godfrey Miles. 
And there's Huey, I mean Park, and there's Fee on top. Uh, just a crunch job right there. Those linebackers for the Gators, very quick, pursue the football. And they do their job well. Second down. Hollingsworth. Oh, oh there's another great hit. Ball. Tim Pock on Lamont <laughs> Russell, and he couldn't hold on to the football. Well, it's hard to hold on to it when you're unconscious. I mean, my goodness, what a, what a lick right there. These kids are really knocking each other out, and uh, that was nose to nose, lips to lips right there. Lamont Russell is getting some smelling sauce right now to bring him back too and you'll see why right here uh. he separated the ball from the player and that might not have been all that he separated from Lamont Russell he really hit him hard well I think the game is violent anyway David but I think it's more violent on these artificial surfaces because the speed of the players uh, is increased and uh, they're so strong and powerful, uh, it's a violent game, and that was a, a gigantic hit. We talked about the speed of that linebacker core led by Tim Pock, and you saw some of the strength there as well. We'll be right back. <laughs> Alabama's all-star tight end, Lamont Russell, appears to be all right as he walks off the field there's the total offensive figures and what a, what a switch from last week for both of these ball clubs Alabama had about 450 yards in total offense against Southern Mississippi the Gators over 500 against Oklahoma State and there's the score at this point seven nothing with 438 left in the second quarter yeah we always love to refer to last week's stats or last year's stats but as we mentioned they're really relevant this afternoon these guys are gonna see uh, Who's going to back down first? And right now, a close ball game, Alabama leading. Dump pass that's deflected into the air by Turner. He tried to recover it himself, get a little something out of it, but couldn't get to it. And that'll bring up fourth down and 12. What have been's and could have been's. That play was set up excellently, but they just weren't able to get it to the to the receiver. He tips the ball, almost creating the potential turnover right there. But Alabama forced a punt and. Gators are going to get a, another shot with about 4.33 left before halftime. Good rush put on. Polk almost got to that football. Now Barber has no chance, and he's down at the 26-yard line. The Gators went all out after the kick, and that kind of left Terrence Barber hanging out on a limb by himself. Florida football at its own 26-yard line with 4.23 left in the second quarter, and Alabama leading 7 to nothing. Sophomore quarterback Shane Matthews still trying to get this Gator offense on the scoreboard. They've had several opportunities. Most uh, recently, a fourth down and in inches deep in Alabama territory, which failed. Matthews passes knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Steve Webb. A six foot three inch junior reached up with his left arm and batted it down at the line of scrimmage. Gators coming out with two tight ends, two wide outs, and one back in that formation, trying to get the ball to Ernie Mills, but it's batted down at the line of scrimmage. Coach Spurrier trying to give Alabama some different looks. On that occasion, he had the two tight ends. Now he's in a slot. Alabama got a blitz on. They got single coverage with Mills, but can't get the ball to him. Now that's uh, what a difference a week makes, huh? Wide open, Ernie Mills having Greg Teague beat on the post route right there, but the ball just a bit too much air under it. But I tell you what, that gets the attention of a quarterback. They'll remember that. Maybe they'll back off a little bit on some of those shorter routes. Barber is wide to the right. Sullivan is wide to the left. The tight end, Kirkpatrick, and a slot to the right side. Matthews has four receivers out looking for the football, but he can't find anybody that almost threw it away. Almost 
threw an interception into the hands of Stacy Harrison who couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, it almost looked like Stacy Harrison was the intended receiver right there. He can't believe he didn't come up with this catch, but he was as shocked as anyone. I think he actually tripped too just a minute before the ball got there and he couldn't concentrate on the catch. That would have been a gigantic turnover and a disaster for the Gators right there. Haley back to punt once again. There's Haley. Jeff Marshall deep to receive. Haley's kicked twice for an average of 37. Alabama trying to get a return on for Marshall. A low kick might give him a chance, but there's James Spear upfield quickly to put the squelch on the Alabama kick return, but the Crimson Tide still will have fine field position. And I'm sure would be very pleased to settle for even three here late in the first half, leading 7-0 with three minutes and 53 seconds left in the first half of the football game. A little bit surprised. I think that the offense, uh, offensive units have not been a bit more successful than they have been. Hollingsworth, percentage-wise, has had a good day, but he's been running for his life a lot back there this afternoon. He's thrown a lot of dump passes to secondary receivers. Well, both teams have done that. Yeah. To his credit, he's made uh, at least a few things happen for that Alabama offense against a terrific Florida defense. Steps up in the pocket. There's a well-thrown ball to Wembley. And good for an Alabama first down. Wembley's second catch of the afternoon. He plays with the crowd a little bit after making a first down yardage. Just drags again in that vacant area that uh, where the linebackers were as the Gators drop back in zone coverage. With Doyle on that sideline, they don't oh. need a whole lot more to get a first down. Florida had everybody coming and looked like on that play, and the handoff was to the fullback, Mike Campbell. Or rather, Robert Jones. Robert Jones, the ball carrier. A junior out of Birmingham, and you can see the Gators had great pressure on, but Alabama almost split the seam right up the middle. Jones is Bobby Humphrey's cousin. The ball carrier on that last play, number 28. Uh-oh, there's confusion on the Gator defense right now. Well, and off <laughs> for, fortunately, it looks like uh, for the Gators, there was confusion on the other side also. So. Tim Hawk had come out of the game. He wasn't supposed to, and then he sprinted back on the field, but he didn't know where to line up, and uh, Hollingsworth was just as confused as we look at Coach Stallings and his staff on the sideline. There's Larry Kirksey, uh, who had spent a number of years as an uh, outstanding offensive backfield coach for the Gators, now on the Alabama staff. Well, this is Southeastern Conference football uh, in its purest form, I think, this afternoon, Jim. Yeah, this is a throwback to the 50s, I believe, and uh, the 60s when they just strapped the helmet on and came out and see who could knock each other down. And uh, right now, these kids are just really going after just a brutal battle out there. And that's what we expected. We're getting nothing less. From the Florida 39, Alabama, second down. There's a penalty flag in the backfield. Jones made the catch for a gain of about four. But I think we're going to have a face mask or a hold against Alabama. Bruce Culpepper was just right in the face of the quarterback, and whoever it was that was trying to block him and keep him, keep him away yeah. committed the, the violation, I'm yeah. certain. Culpepper gets right in the face of Hollingsworth right there, but Hollingsworth delivered the strike anyway, but Culpepper was being held by the face mask. Now that's a desperate move by an offensive lineman. The first line of defense is to grab their jersey. The last line of defense is to grab their face mask. Actually, the last line of defense is to grab anything you can get a hold of to protect your <laughs> quarterback and an experienced Alabama line there being tested by the experienced defenders on that front line of defense for the Gators strength against strength there on the front line and the trenches Alabama's front wall against that Gator front four Hollingsworth about to run out of time 
just did get the snap off and he throws the ball away had a mix-up apparently with his receiver Sanderson had cut up the field and was headed down for a longer pattern he just threw under under through the receiver with Pawk and Dexter Smith both in the area he tried to check off and I don't think the uh, communication got to his wide receivers on the correct route there and that play just never had a chance two inside linebackers Tim Pawk and Jerry Odom had a shot at the interception but just miscommunication on that play by the tied offense now Alabama which a moment ago looked like they were threatening to get at least three on the board there in a third down and very long back in their own territory picked off by Will White White trying to get out of the way of his own man and finally does and is out of bounds at the 37 yard line of Alabama the intended receiver was fullback Kevin Turner, but the pass was thrown right to that guy, number two, Will White. Well, your free safety plays a lot uh, like a center fielder in zone coverage is right there, and Will White must have been reading Hollingsworth as he breaks out of the pocket. Hollingsworth's going to feel some pressure outside. Mark, Mark Murray on your right. He's got a gaping hole. Now he's just, Will White's breaking on the uh, telegraph pass that Hollingsworth delivers. Will White reading the eyes of the quarterback all the way and then look at that outstanding run he gets down the field as well White's third career interception pressure is on Trey Everett with his first catch oh was he hit by T quick screen to the outside the blocking was there Trey Everett had an immediate opening but then the door shuts rapidly and again the crunching defense played by both of these uh, ball clubs this afternoon Oh, and you, right there it was Teague, yeah, number 13. Jim, you got to be so impressed with the overall team speed on both sides of the field. Absolutely. Just very impressive. Uh, these kids can run sideline to sideline all day long on defense. Receiver is open, but Everett can't hold on to the football. The pass was thrown low, and again, Matthews was under great pressure. It'll be third down and six. Let's go to Steve Babbitt. Jim, last offensive series, Lamont Russell, the tight end who was hurt earlier by Tim Paul. Well, he came back in the last few plays. I went over to their sideline and asked one of their guys what happened to him, and he said, your boy just knocked all the air out of him. He had to take a few minutes to catch all his breath, and he's back in there. He's okay. That is good news, Lamont Russell, one of the great players in this conference and in this nation. Here, uh, rather Ernie Mills was open and it's short again it's going to be a big call uh, I think by coach Spurrier David uh, maybe a foot short let's see where they mark it but uh, Ernie Mills did a nice job diving for that first down marker and that's a nice play by Matthews because he threw that ball a long way to the sideline on a clothesline Eric Curry the uh, Alabama defensive end just pulling his way into the backfield right there and putting pressure on Matthews another fourth and inches and it looks like Steve Spurrier wants to call timeout make sure he's got the play that he wants he's already failed to convert a fourth down and inches even deeper in Alabama territory earlier in this game there are, are one minute 23 seconds left in the second period Florida threatens to score but still trails Alabama by the score of seven to nothing we saw Coach Spurrier for a minute there, David, chat with Jim Bates, his defensive coordinator. Uh, Coach Bates coming over and giving his viewpoint on what the Gators might consider on this fourth down. You see the pressure from the backside. Now watch Ernie desperately try and pick up that first down, but clearly stepping out of bounds at least a foot uh, before he could pick up that first down. Let's see what the coach does on the last uh, fourth and inches. He tried to pitch to the tailback. Uh, he might put the ball in the air this time. Ernie Mills knew two things that time. He knew, one, that he was close to the first down marker, but knew that he needed a couple of yards at least to get it, and he also knew that he was going to get hit and hit hard from some Alabama player. And uh, That's a hard pass to catch, too, David, when you're button hook and you know the ball is coming to you and you're waiting, waiting, waiting. Sometimes you, tart, you start to take off before you catch it and you drop the football, but a lot of poise right there by Ernie Mills. Catching the football, then turning up field, but short of the first down. Let's see what happens here. Two tight ends, the I formation on fourth down and inches. 
McClendon did not get the first down. Alabama holds again. 119 left in the second period. Robert Stewart, the junior nose guard, stuffed the play at the line of scrimmage. Let's take another look. Well, this is a big physical victory for Alabama right here, just stuffing the play in the backfield, but it's a gigantic mental victory because this gives them a tremendous uh, lift in their confidence that they can out-physical Florida. They can match up with Florida all day long on two different occasions they've just been more physical at the line of scrimmage so that does tremendous things for your psyche as you come back later in the second half and continue to fight the battle Robert Jones gets the pitch looked like he ran into his own man fullback Kevin Turner who was trying to block out in front for him but very little room to run that time only a minute five left in the second period and another timeout has been called as there is an injured player on the field. Again, as a result of the hard hitting, just an awesome display of crunching football by both defenses. These kids are just selling out completely on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Uh, and, uh, oh, that's Russell again. That's unfortunate. Knocked out earlier. Now it looks like it might be his ankle. Big guys had a tough afternoon. Let's see, if we, let's see, Jim, if we can pick up where the injury occurred. There's, there he is at the is. far right on your screen. It's number uh, 41 for the Gators. Who's that? Ed Robinson, the inside linebacker, just Pushed pushes him, back. him backwards and I think maybe uh, over on his ankle. Over 50 receptions last year, the leading receiver for the Tide, uh, all-conference tight end. Only weighs about 215. That's un unusual to see a tight end that's uh, that small in this day and age, but uh, gives them that deep threat. Extremely difficult to cover Russell all afternoon, and he might not be back. Looked like he was favoring an ankle as he limped off the field with help. Second down and eight. Clock running with 43 seconds left in the first half. Robert Jones. Was way down on the depth chart coming into this game. In fact, he was so far down on the depth chart, he wasn't on the depth chart. Now he's a junior from Birmingham. And again, with the injuries they've had at the tailback position, they're throwing some new bodies out on the field. Do you see where Auburn... Uh, Last week had to call a kid out of the uh, stands because their tailbacks had been hurt. They had one of their kids uh, watch the game in the first uh, half and then got called to duty, carried the ball seven times in the second half. Be ready, Jim. Somebody might call on you here before the day is over. The end of the first half with Alabama leading the Florida Gators 7 to nothing. We'll be back to Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama right after this. Well, it was Coach Spurrier's first year, and, uh, you know, Steve wanted to put in the players' minds that uh, they could win on the road, and perhaps at that time, no tougher venue to go into than uh, Tuscaloosa and win at Bryant-Denny Stadium, because Florida had, had won there, but not since the 60s, and I think they'd only beaten them like one of only two teams to ever win in that ballpark, but that was a long time ago, and Steve had a lot of obstacles to overcome, and sure enough, uh, the Gators are playing pretty well, but at halftime, trailing 10 to nothing. Spurrier shut out in the first half against a very good Alabama defense. Lower Bowl season tickets start at just 20 bucks. Call 786-777-HOOP. If you added up all the hours you'd spent rebuilding small blocks and boosting horsepower, you would have graduated from UTI by now. And you'd be getting paid for doing what you love. 
Call 1-800-884-4262 to find out how we can make you one of the best technicians in the world. Universal Technical Institute. Sunshine Gridiron Classics continues next with more of the Florida-Alabama rivalry. 1993 marked the second annual SEC championship game and the last from Legion Field. MVP Terry Dean leads the Gators. It's next on Sunshine. Alabama kicks off to Florida to start the second half for Bryant-Denny Stadium. Pete Archie from the goal line. Freshman is tackled at about the 16-yard line. Gators have not had much success on their returns, either kick or punt, against Alabama here in this football game. As we get started for the third period, and a 7-0 game with Alabama on the one touchdown pass from Hollingsworth to Sanderson, trying to make that hold up at this point. Florida backed up at its own 17-yard line on first down. Quarterback Shane Matthews operates with his backs in the eye. Matthews uh, looked like a mix-up on the play, and he can only step out of bounds near the 15. He turned back to his right, and there was nothing there. It looked like there was a problem in communication. Yeah, I think Shane uh, reversed out from the center the wrong way. Uh, both his backs were on the other side. It's supposed to be a play-action pass. Uh, mental mistake on the first play of the series of the second half. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see the Gators really try and open up things even more, trying to get the ball deep downfield, coming up with a big play to lift their uh, spirits a bit as well as pick up significant yardage. Matthews has good protection. He's got the tight end, Kirkpatrick, out near the 25, a couple of yards short of a first down. John Sullins, the linebacker, made the stop for Alabama. What a terrific player he's going to be and is for the Gators this year. Uh, Kirk Kirkpatrick touch, uh, catches everything he touches, and uh, right there, the quarterback looking for him, uh, just short of the first down marker, third and a healthy two, maybe three. The Gators have not been very successful on conversion. They try to sweep to the short side of the field. The ball is fumbled. And I think Alabama's got it. It looked like George Thornton fell on the football at about the 27-yard line. Oh, and that's a gigantic break for the Gators right there. It looked like uh, maybe his knee did go down, but Alabama definitely had control of the football. What did uh, they say, that the running back was down? I think they did. I think they're saying the whistle had blown, and... Uh, Let's take another look here as McClendon is the ball carrier. There's Stewart. Now see, the ball is loose. loose. They just never saw that. That's, uh, that's a gift. Alabama knocks the ball loose. I can't believe they missed that. Uh, evidently, quick whistle. But when luck is on your side, you will take it. Jason Haley will punt. Jeff Marshall deep to return for Alabama. It is... They have just gotten a big break. End over in and short. Marshall makes the fair catch. There's no flag this time, although Alabama would like to see one as Andy Newman, the man who snapped the ball, almost interfered. And Alabama will have it at the 49-yard line. Great field position. Crimson tied with the 7-0 lead. We'll be back. season was the most successful season in Lightning history. In celebration, Sunday nights will replay some of the key victories from this magical season. This Sunday, as the playoffs approach, Vinny LeCavalier's hat trick pushed the Lightning past the Coyotes for another key road win. Your Southeast Division champion Lightning and the Phoenix Coyotes. Sunday night on Sunshine. What does it take to be a winner? Intensity, hard work, and proper nutrition. That's why I've made ProBites part of my everyday diet. 
because taking care of my body has let me pitch in the major leagues for 20 years. I know an all-star when I see one, and snack food just got healthy. Probite, protein that goes crunch. So grab a bag and tell them the rocket sent you. Available at GNC, Smoothie King, and other fine health food stores. of emergency, A, remain calm, B, panic, C, break glass, life beckons, and you're holding the key. Alabama's first offensive try in the third period, the pitch to the freshman tailback, Anderson, he's got great speed, remember, and if he'd gotten past Godfrey Miles, he might have six in the end zone. As it is, Alabama has a first down at Florida's 30-yard line. Godfrey Miles made this possibly a touchdown-saving tackle. Biggest play of the afternoon uh, has to cut back because the containment is there, but when he cuts back, there's no Gator defenders in pursuit until Godfrey Miles, fortunately for Florida fans, chases him down from behind. Jones has good yardage on first down at the 25-yard line. Alabama hurting at the tailback position with injuries to Suron Stacy, their outstanding uh, tailback entering the season. Then Derek Lassick playing with uh, an injury a little bit this afternoon, but they're relying on Chris Anderson and Robert Jones, and they're getting the job done on this drive anyway. Second down and five. Fullback Kevin Turner picked up a couple to about the 22-yard line. By the way, Alabama's got tight end Lamont Russell back in the lineup, and that is good news for Crimson Tide fans and for college football fans, for that matter. There he is at the very top of your screen, number 81. Uh, he's shaking up twice in the first half of the game. He's in the lineup now. He's in the Whirlpool tomorrow, if not tonight. From the Florida 22-yard line. Robert Jones behind the line of scrimmage and will not get the first down. In fact, he lost a couple of yards thanks to an outstanding play by Ephesians Bartley, the junior out of Jacksonville. Mike Brandon and Godfrey Miles, David, stringing that play out. There's Godfrey Miles, there's Brandon in pursuit, and then it's Ephesians making the tackle. Alabama's already got its field goal team on the field. Three points in this situation. It's like 30 points in a, a normal game situation, as well as these defensive teams have played today. Doyle on the verge of reaching something of a milestone. If he can hammer through this 41-yard kick, he's got plenty of distance, and it is there. Alabama tacks on three more early in the third. The Crimson Tide takes a 10-0 lead over Florida. With 11 minutes, 23 seconds to play in period number three. Being down 10 to nothing in the third quarter um, put us in a position we had been in numerous times in the past couple of years. But we knew that if we could hang in there and somehow pull this out, it would begin a new era of Gator football. Um, so we kept it close, and, and I'll be dang if we were able to do some things to uh, put us back in the game. We struggled uh, early on against Alabama. It was a, a very difficult uh, place to play, a tough environment, and Florida had never really gone on the road and win SEC games. And that was one thing that Coach Spurry wanted us to start doing was to, to improve and win on the road. That's one thing that he emphasized, and uh, we found a way. It's probably the most uh, critical game in the Spurrier era. It, it proved to the Florida fans and to our players that we could win big games on the road. Alabama will kick off to Florida after Philip Doyle's 41-yard field goal, which is career field goal number 56 for Doyle. That tied him with former Georgia great Rex Robinson for sixth place in the SEC field goal list. 
a short Alabama scoring drive. After a short Florida punt. Right. Their offensive possession started near the midfield mark. Florida held on a big third down and two, but Alabama took advantage of the field position to cash in with three points. It's 10-0 now, and there's Philip Doyle, the senior from Birmingham, ready to kick off. Freshman Pete Archie, freshman Monty Duncan, deep at the goal line for Florida. Doyle kicks it deep. Duncan, the redshirt freshman out of St. Augustine, found a crease and got good field position finally out across the 30-yard line. This is, I think, the best field position that Florida has had on a kick return today. Very impressive effort by Monty Duncan. He just took off like a rocket. You don't get up there and dance around. If you do, it's a mistake. You slash, you sprint, and that's exactly what he did on that kick return, and he got every inch that was allowable. Very nice job. There's a Florida offense that has yet to scratch on the scoreboard, trailing 10-0. The sophomore quarterback has yet to get the passing game going. He'll try on first down. He's going deep for Ernie Mills. It is knocked away by Teague at the 20-yard line. A fine play by sophomore quarterback Greg Teague. Teague with Ernie Mills step for step, timing his leap perfectly right there. Just a brilliant play by the cornerback, the sophomore. Beautiful pass, and Ernie Mills is going to catch it, but no. Here comes Teague. Just a brilliant effort right there, man for man. But uh, again, you got to keep taking your shots at him. That was first down. Let's see what Steve Spurrier and Shane Matthews and company come with on second down and 10. Pass over the middle. Alonzo Sullivan has a first down into Alabama territory at the 47-yard line of the Crimson Tide. Ephraim Thomas. Made the tackle on Alonzo Sullivan, a high school quarterback at Largo High. Converted to a wide receiver with the Florida Gators. Caught a couple of balls last week. Just caught one in the most dangerous zone on the playing field for a wide receiver right up the middle. Well, about, out of all of uh, Shane Matthews' completions, David, that's the most impressive one I've seen. That thing was a rope. That was a perfect spiral. Alonzo Sullivan coming up with a catch, and there we see another leg cramp and... Uh, with the heat and the uh, competitive nature of this ball game, the muscles eventually give way to exhaustion, and Stacy Harrison goes down with a leg cramp. Look at this ball, though. This, this thing is drilled. Uh, one of the shortcomings that we heard Shane Matthews might have had was that his arm wasn't as strong as some of the other Gator quarterbacks, but it was plenty strong, strong on that enough one. on that one. Looked like a high, hard one, and an excellent catch by Sullivan with, with his hands. There's Steve Spurrier, who has a sophomore quarterback for Florida, played right here on this same field against Alabama, came up short in a 17-14 Alabama victory. That was back in 1964 as a sophomore Spurrier led that Gator team. And now Shane Matthews trying to bring his team from behind. We're in the third period with Alabama on top. Lacey here with highlights from the Game of Life. Here's the Vaughn family trapped behind the line of scrimmage at the boss's soiree. Their next play could mean the difference between a day of agony or ecstasy. So what's the next play, Gene? It's good! <laughs> hey, they're going long! Touchdown, yeah. Vaughn family! Be full Brady's where kids can be kids and so can grown-ups. Up 
The Florida Gators break huddle with 10.57 left in the third period. Alabama 10, Florida nothing. Sophomore quarterback Shane Matthews has him first down at the Alabama 47-yard line. Going for broke again for Trey Everett. This one's almost intercepted by Charles Gardner. Well, Trey Everett is double covered. Terrence Barber has single coverage, but Shane Matthews decides to go to Everett anyway. This, this play has no chance at all. Jim, do you get the feeling there's a some method to Steve Spurrier's madness here, throwing deep continuously to stretch out Alabama's defense a little bit because last time we saw after the long pass, take a 15, 18 yard pass up the middle. And underneath, oh, right. I, I always believe there's a method to what he does. <laughs> you don't have to convince me of that. There goes, it is. Goes short again, Everett makes the catch. Oh. It's a great play to get away from one man, and finally is taken out, and a penalty flag went down as well on the tackle by Mark McMillan, which... Maybe the face mask, huh? That's what you would think. Wasn't that a beautiful move by Everett, though? Uh, catching the football is a big responsibility, but then when you can advance it on your own running ability, when defenders are all around you, that's uh, an outstanding effort. That looks like the penalty is going to go against the Gators. Maybe he's stiff-armed. McMillan uh, and grabbed his face mask. It's a face mask against Florida, which is not a play you see very often. I think that might be it. We're not. Here's we see uh, the wide receivers slot formation. There's Everett. Now he's going to do a 360 spin out. Now watch the right hand go up right there. Can't do that. Can't do that. But it's from the point of the infraction, so at least they move down the field a little bit. I think Steve Spurrier is not happy with that call. The ball is back to the 45-yard line. Matthews back to throw again. The ball is deflected at the line of scrimmage. George Thornton, for the second time in this game, gets a piece of it. Big George, 6'3", 293, the uh, only returning starter at the down lineman position on the Alabama defense. Got this paw in that one, and uh, Gators facing a third and seven, trailing 10 to nothing. Both Everett and Barber have come wide to the near side. Willie McClendon going to have to get it on his own. He's got the first down, and McClendon crosses the 30 down to about the 28-yard line of Alabama. He did not have the first down when he caught the football, but he turned it upfield quickly and picked up the necessary yardage. Well, the wide receivers were double covered, so it was either Kirk Kirkpatrick or McClendon that was going to be his primary receiver, and Ogden, number 56, <laughs> just can't keep up with McClendon right there. McClendon putting on the brakes. Ogden has no chance. Willie moves the ball down the field, but the quarterback, Reed, he knew exactly where he had to go right there. He was looking for his tailback. That's one of the few third down conversions of the afternoon. McClendon. 4-3. Steve Webb on the tackle. Very important for Florida to get some points out of this offensive effort. Uh, David failed in trailing 10 to nothing again, if not for anything else but psychological reasons, but uh, they got to catch up eventually, and now is as good a time as any to start with their, perhaps their deepest penetration, certainly in the second half. It is the third time the Gators have been inside the 25 of Alabama. Everett, nifty move inside the 10. It'll be first down and goal for the Gators. Beautiful combo, quarterback, wide receiver as we look at Coach Spurrier who's pleased with that one right there. Was that Everett, number 24? Trey, watch him at the top of your screen. He's, I think he's in the slot. He's gonna go down, feel about 10 yards, then sit down and wait for the linebackers and the safety right there to clear off no, he wasn't in the slot. He was the receiver that was furthest out in the formation. Eric Rett got hit head-on by Stacy Harrison at about the seventh. 
Let's check quickly with Steve Babbitt. Steve? Jim and David, a few offensive series ago, I don't know if you noticed, Ernie Niels came out, and he was uh, working on his left shoulder, just a bruised shoulder, not severely, but enough to keep him out. That's why you've seen Terrence Barber in the game, Trey Everett. Alonzo Sullivan came out for a few plays to get his ankle retaped, but he's back in there offensively now. Right now, the Gators moving with the passing game, but I tell you, down here right now, the noise level is so high. Let's see what happens with this offensive play. Crowd comes to its feet on second down and goal from the six and a half of Alabama. Matthews fires for the end zone. It's caught. Oh. Touchdown, Terrence Barber. That is his first touchdown catch of the year, and did Shane Matthews ever put it where he had to put it? Well, George T. cannot believe he didn't get that ball. He thought he had a read on that one. Excuse me, Greg T., number 13. He thought he had that ball all the way, but Clay Matthews just sneaked it by him, much like a pitcher does to a, a batter. It's a 10-6 game now, and Arden Krzyzewski will try and bring it back to a field goal deficit. The kick is good, and Florida has scored for the first time this afternoon. They've been down in that territory for several times this afternoon, but finally were able to put it in. And there's the guy who caught the touchdown pass, the senior out of Auburndale, and his third year of Active playing with the Florida Gators was an academic casualty in his first season at Florida, but making the most of the situation here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Uh, Terrence, continue to finish a play. You know, we always encourage our guys when the play breaks down, you got to get yourself open. And I think Terrence is one of those guys, he loves competing. And uh, he found a way to get to the back of the end zone, uh, maybe two yards from the back. And, and uh, Shane got a little bit of pressure. We were, was, we were rolling out, but he got a little pressure. Uh, I think the front side guys were being covered. Uh, I think we were trying to hit the tight end on that one, uh, Kirk Kirkpatrick. And uh, it was, Terrence was the backside guy. He really was the third choice on the play. And lo and behold, Shane looked back to the inside, and uh, he saw Terrence coming across there, and you know, really nobody covering him. And I mean, he made that nice catch. And, protected himself and the ball, and, you know, we got a touchdown out of the deal. It was one of those kind of just scramble around and, and find Terrence in the back of the end zone. It, uh, it worked out fine. Like I said, we struggled the whole day offensively, but uh, it, was a, uh, it was one of those games where our defense played outstanding, but we found a way to put enough points on the board to win. At the touchdown pass from Matthews to Barber. It's kind of a naked bootleg right here, and when the ball leaves Matthews' hands, I think Teague has it. I think Teague thinks he has it, but it just slips right by him. And Terrence Barber, who's one of the greatest uh, high school receivers in the state of Florida history, now is a senior at the university, comes up with a gigantic touchdown catch. Krzyzewski kicks it away. And it is going to be Prince Wembley. Wembley to the 25-yard line, and that's where Alabama will have it first down and 10. The momentum has shifted a bit here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Ryan Ruland made the, is the guy who kicked off that time for the Florida Gators. There's the scoring summary, 67 yards and 12 plays. Barber with the touchdown pass from Shane Matthews. Evidently, they believe uh, Ruland's leg's a little bit stronger, and he's doing some kickoff duty. Shusevsky, the obviously the, guys they, the guy they call on for the field goals. 7.42 left in the third period. Florida coming with a blitz on first down, and there's a good play for that defensive call as fullback Kevin Turner turns it upfield and has the football down into Florida territory to the 47 or 8-yard line. There are penalty flags everywhere. Turner returning from last year's SEC championship team. A lot of experience at the fullback position. Again, you're looking at a team that was a tri-champion in the Southeastern Conference last year, returned nine or 10 starters on that offense. This is a costly penalty, face mask on top of the big gainer. The play covered about 25 yards 
by itself. Florida had an all-out blitz coming, and the fullback, Turner, popped down to the backfield quickly to make the catch and then made a great run on top of it. Will White made the tackle and was the guilty party on the face mask. But they call it inadvertent, so it was only a five-yard penalty. It wasn't flagrant. It would have been 15. Ball is across the 50 at the Florida 48-yard line. Anderson looking for a block on the corner. Jimmy Spencer chases him out of bounds at the 39-yard line. What Chris Anderson does so well here is dip to the inside. He gets Spencer to bite with one step, and then he's outside. Jimmy Spencer is all by himself out here as the Gators are trying to string this play out. Spencer's going to take one dip inside, and this Anderson kid almost sprints down the sideline. Spencer finally knocks him out of bounds. Well, in 86, a freshman by the name of Bobby Humphrey really hurt the Gators in a game at Florida Field. And then in 1987, it was a freshman by the name of Emmett Smith who tore up Alabama in Birmingham. Anderson has the first down, oh. holds on to the football. He runs hard for 175 pounds, doesn't he? Got hit by Jerry Odom, the linebacker. But it is good for an Alabama first down to the 37-yard line of Florida. 7.15 left in the third period. That year, Bobby Humphrey played so well against the Gators, he also had started as the third-team tailback. Chris Anderson comes into this ball game as the Tide's third-team tailback. All kinds of shifting going on at the line of scrimmage. And the whistle is blown as Tarrant Lynch is finally dragged down at the 30-yard line. There's a fresh body in the Alabama backfield. Eh? Look at Huey just dominate Russell right there, but there's no help inside. Spear gets caught outside. I think that was his responsibility. Huey was fighting outside. Spear should have been inside. There was no one there. They're creating a little bit of confusion there by putting their tight end in motion, flip-flopping the tight end on occasion. Motion backs, motion wide receivers. Freshman Tarrant Lynch again. This time he's hit right at the line of scrimmage by Ed Robinson, the linebacker. Lynch is a, another true freshman out of Town Creek, Alabama. Balled into duty with the injury to Saran Stacy. There's some graduate students having a good time here at the ball game. There's a look at Lynch, six feet, 190 pounds. Ball is at the 29-yard line of the Gators. A very important third down play for both football teams. Sanderson makes the catch for the first down at the 20-yard line. Oh, this kid's very impressive. He's got uh, tremendous ability and excellent hands. It reminds you a lot of former Alabama greats, Ray Perkins and Dennis Homan, who were outstanding wide receivers here back in the 60s. This kid is small but quick and excellent hands. Look at this, 50 yards, four receptions. First down, Robert Jones picks up three. Clock ticking inside of five minutes in the third period. Alabama 10, Florida 7 with the Crimson Tide threatening to score again. What the flip-flopping tight end and the wide receivers in motion is doing is changing the responsibilities of the Gator defenders at the last second and they're Alabama's hoping to create a little bit of uncertainty in that Gator defense and take advantage. Here we see it again. Fullback Houston to about the 14-yard line. Looked like Brad Culpepper got some penetration, got his head up, found the ball player. Making the tackle there. Big Brad played an excellent game of defensive tackle. He and Mike Brandon on the interior. Mark Murray and Huey Richardson outside and that four down front. Four down lineman front. 
the important thing now for Florida's defense is not to let Alabama get a touchdown. A field goal, and you're only down six, a touchdown, and you're down ten. Third down. Inside the 15. Looking for Russell, the big tight end. It's oh. intercepted by Will White again. Really nice. Richard Bain inside, Will White. Outside the free safety. Again, David, I think he was reading Gary Hollingsworth's eyes right there. The primary receiver and the center fielder. Is that his second of the day? You know what? I don't think Hollingsworth ever looked at anybody except Lamont Russell. And I think Will White on his prior interception read his eyes as well. The Tide faithful are on their feet right now as we see the break on the ball. Richard Fain actually had been beaten right there. Fain had him, and Will White came over to the res rescue. and the quest for gold start here. Tomorrow's Olympians begin their journey in Florida's Sunshine State Games, an Olympic-style sports festival for athletes of all ages and skill levels. The 2003 Sunshine State Games, presented by Visit Florida, will feature more than 8,500 athletes competing in 30 sports throughout the Tampa Bay area. Experience the games on Sunshine Network, July 27th at 4.30 p.m. Good news is the Gators have the ball. The bad news for Florida, it's at the one-yard line. And Matthews going to throw out of the end zone, going deep for Mills, and it's caught! Ernie Mills! Oh. To the 29-yard line of Alabama. Oh, you talking about a change in uh, momentum. Woo. Deep in your own end zone, backed up against your own wall. And look at this, Ernie Mills on the post route. Here's the bomb. You see Efren Thomas trying to get back and help out, but Ernie splits him. George Teague has no chance after Ernie Mills runs right by him, but he does have the speed to catch him. 69 yards on the play. From the 28-yard line of the Crimson Tide, the Gators have the football. That name actually became the Mills play, and then uh, Ernie has recognition for that play, and. Uh, we still have similar plays to it. I uh, think just up until last year, we, we had the Mills play. We still have a, that play in. Uh, we don't call it the same, but uh, he was recognized for in making the big play, and we named that pattern after him. Uh, the play was signaled in for the post route to Ernie Mills, and uh, you know it's not always there. I have to read it and maybe hit the end route, but uh, the safety bit up. I, I thought Coach was crazy to call this play because we hadn't blocked them all day, and he calls a seven-step drop from our own two-yard line. All I could think was getting hit in the back of the head and fumbling and them scoring. But uh, I aired it out as far as I could. Ernie ran underneath it, and uh, the turf monster got him where he would have been a 98-yard touchdown pass. So uh, that was a huge play in that game. Well, sometimes you got to be fortunate. Uh, they, they played some kind of defense where their safety didn't get back there. And uh, I don't know if a guy was hurt or out of position. Uh, but the play was sort of uh, intended if the safety was back for about a 15-yard uh, maybe curl on the left side, and we had uh, Ernie going deep down the middle. And sure enough, there was nobody deep, so Shane threw it down there, hit him perfectly, and uh, the guy ran him down on about their 25 or 30. But uh, now usually a long pass is not the kind of get you in trouble. It's those short ones that get deflected, and the other guy picks it off. So uh, even if if we throw it 50 yards downfield and it gets intercepted, uh, that's like a punt just about. Second down. Here comes a blitz. Matthews unloads quickly. He's got Barber made a good catch at the 12-yard line of Alabama. Florida has a first and 10 with 235 left in the third period. Antonio Langham seeing duty at the cornerback 
position. Matthews goes to the single coverage. Terrence Barber has single coverage, runs a little bit of an outside route there and goes down low to scoop up the reception. But Gators continue to move, first down. Pass was intended for Willie McClendon. Charles Gardner was covering. Shane gets a chance to personally talk to Coach Spurrier because the play ended on that side of the field. Forced out of the pocket there, found the pressure a little bit too intense from the inside. Snuck out of the pocket to the right and just couldn't find anybody. A little bit of confusion in the backfield. Who's going to stay in? Which back is out? Which is in? But right now the Gators come up to the line for a second and Tim trailing by a field goal late in the third period oh. through the hands of Willie McClendon John Sullins number 90 in coverage right there Willie had a step but I think Shane had a little too much on that one that was a, he zipped that ball in there he didn't pull the string on it Let's check with Steve Babick down on the field. David and Jim, the Gators depth at wide receiver has been so evident right now in this game because Ernie Mills has been banged up again with his shoulder. He's out. You've had Monty Duncan in the game, Alonzo Sullivan in the game. The Houston, the freshman wide receiver, that depth is really coming into play right here. The passing game's going to work. It's going to be because of those young kids. It is third down. And off to McClendon. To the six. Fourth down, and about four. No choice but the field goal. Almost broke that one. Uh, trying to cross up Alabama. Third and long, going with a quick draw. McClendon, one step away from breaking it, but here comes Krzyzewski. Only one miss in his career, and that was earlier in this ball game when it was a little bit out of his range. He's been very consistent for two years now. Backup quarterback Johnny Nichols puts it down. Krzyzewski kicks it through. And the game is tied at 10-10 with 128 left in the third period. We've got the makings of a great one at Bryant-Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Hope you're enjoying today's telecast of University of Florida football on Sports Channel. David Steele and Jim Yarbrough, glad to be here with you. I can promise you that. And I can also guarantee you that those fans who traveled from the Sunshine State are glad to be here as well. They've seen one whale of a football game, as have the great fans from the state of Alabama. This is just a classic Southeastern Conference game and very important for both of these football teams, even though it is only the second week of the regular season for both ball clubs. You lose one game early and you're playing sudden death football if you want to win a conference championship the rest of the way because very few championships are going to be won in this league with two losses. I think for the first time this afternoon, you sense a little bit of concern among the Alabama faithful and the Alabama team. I think they pretty much had things their way, or at least in the area of feel, feeling that they matched up or were very comfortable with Florida, thought that they could do what they wanted to do uh, enough to get this game won. But right now, Florida comes back and has tied the ball game, and there's, uh, there's a bit of trepidation <laughs> on that... Uh, Alabama tied side of the field. There's a lot of sweat down there, too. It is hot. It was supposed to have been a little bit cooler, Jim. I think that it turned out to be today. Yeah, thank goodness you and I finally got some shade here. It's, it's, a, it's a burner. There is Odin being helped off of the playing field. We don't know if he'll be back or not. And the ball is kicked by Ryan Rulin. And Prince Wembley comes out of there with it. Monty Groh making a possibly touchdown saving tackle right there. Florida scoring summary, of course, out of those 92 yards, the Gators got 69 and one fell swoop with a long pass from quarterback Shane Matthews to Ernie Mills. Krzyzewski's field goal has tied it up. 10-10, late in the third period. 122 left.
Looks like a mix-up. Hollingsworth is down. Michael Brandon was in the backfield along with Mark Murray and Bruce Culpepper. Gene Stallings becoming a bit more concerned as this third quarter progresses. He had a 10-0 lead just moments ago. Yeah, he turned the wrong way. Uh, it almost looked like it was an intentional bootleg. Then you saw a bit of panic on his face and you realized that it was a blown play. Michael Brandon out of Perry, Taylor County High School. Only 41 seconds left in the period. Again, they did it again. There's Brandon again. Two mental errors in a row. Very unusual for an experienced quarterback like Gary Hollingsworth, but nonetheless, it helps the uh, Gator cause, and the tide's in trouble. And it is Alabama that looks like the team on the road reeling instead of the Florida Gators. Maybe he's been uh, stunned a bit, because uh, certainly those were unexpected mistakes made by the quarterback the most productive offensive performer in the Southeastern Conference last year, Gary Hollingsworth, player of the year on offense. And that is going to be the end of the third period. And we are right back where we started with Alabama and Florida all tied up 10-10 as we go to the fourth quarter. It is a tie game as we go to the fourth quarter from Bryant-Denny Stadium and one of the heroes of this afternoon's game for the Florida Gators, that guy right there, sophomore safety, Will White out of Tallahassee, Florida. A couple of interceptions in this game, the, the big one at the one-yard line, stopping an Alabama scoring a drive and turning it back over to the Gators the very next play Matthews hit Mills for 69 yards and that set up a field goal which tied it up now from the shotgun formation Hollingsworth is throwing deep he overthrew everybody and he really took a lick back on the back end of that play did Hollingsworth Donnie Finkley was the intended receiver yeah sprinting down the sideline against the Gators uh, all-star performer Richard Fain I don't think Richard Fain David has given up a pass in his area to date in this it's early in the season but he's playing uh, outstanding football Richard Fain. Stan Moss is deep the game oh! blocked the punt and it touchdown. is recovered in the end zone touchdown Woo! Florida Richard Fain recovered the fumble well, the coaches always preach offense, defense, specialty teams. And here it is this afternoon. Offense, defense, and now specialty teams. Let's see who blocked it. He took a little too much time trying to get the seams right. He was more worried about getting the seams right. Jimmy Spencer Jimmy blocked Spencer, it. Jimmy Spencer, second week in a row, David yep. Steele. Hawk almost blocked one earlier in this game. Spencer did, and he got all of that one. The Gators have taken a 16 to 10 lead and Krzyzewski is on to try and give him a seven point advantage. The kick is good. 14 minutes, 45 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Florida fans celebrate. The Gators have taken a 17 to 10 lead over Alabama in Tuscaloosa. We'll be back in a moment. Huge play, uh, I'll always remember it. In fact, I, I think there's been pictures in the media guides since then. Um, I think everybody turning around, holding our hands up as touchdown, but uh, may have been the most pivotal play in the beginning of the Spurrier era, because at that point we realized, you know what, we can win this thing and we can go into hostile territory into a major program and come away with a victory. So I think that was the first point with which we figured out that, hey, there's something special here in Steve Spurrier. So David, I don't think Coach Spurrier has a specialty team coach per se. I think all the coaches participate uh, on the uh, Gator specialty teams as we look at the happiness of Jimmy Spencer. Second week in a row, he blocks a punt. This one turning into a gigantic touchdown for the Florida Gators. 
Rulin kicks off. Kevin uh, Keith Lee, rather, the freshman, ran into his own man. Now he'll not get away and goes down at about the 20-yard line. The tackle was made by Brent Ellis. And Alabama has the ball at its own 20-yard line with 14.38 left. Now find themselves trailing in their own backyard, 17 to 10. Very difficult for an offense to come out and maintain their, their poise after such a dramatic event like that, uh, but the Tide has no choice. They have to get it back together on offense, go a long way against the difficult biting, scra scratching, and fighting Gator defense. Well, this freshman tailback is a good-looking runner, Tarrant Lynch. Picked up about six or seven yards on first down. Steve Babick from the sideline. What have you got? When the score was tied 10-10, you could see the attitude and the atmosphere on this team just go up. Obviously, it was a new ball game, 10-10. With that block punt by Jimmy Spencer and the score by Richard Bain, the morale has gone so sky high, you can just see the confidence level just rising. I'll tell you, this team is a team that believes in itself right now. And then I'll tell you, the, the having the lead makes all the difference in the world. Back up to you guys. Second down and four for Alabama. Hollingsworth, the short drop. And it is apparently a good catch by Craig Sanderson, who's had himself a big afternoon. He's caught a touchdown pass. I think that's his fifth reception of the day. Nice first down by the Tide right there. Again, with momentum on the side of Florida, they answer with a first down. Hollingsworth, I understand, uh, since the first quarter is 5 of 13 passing the ball, so they haven't been very effective with their passing game since the first quarter. There's his total figures for the afternoon. Bama from its 33. Mark Murray had a shot at it, and Ed Robinson was there. Tarrant Lynch is knocked down near the line of scrimmage. Another jarring blow by the Gator defense. That looked like a public mugging there, didn't it? Good gracious. James Spear, the guy who hit him hard. The senior out of Miami, his fifth year in the Gator football program out of Carroll City High School. Mark Murray also doing a good job right there stringing that play out. And Mark's coming out right now to get a rest. Gary Hollingsworth in the tide facing a second and ten. Gators having trouble getting players off the field. They just did in the nick of time. Lynch for about three. Huey Richardson, the Lombardi candidate at the defensive end position, making the tackle. There's Big Huey. Hasn't had a quarterback sack today, but with that offensive line of Alabama's and the drops, the short drops that Hollingsworth takes, and he gets the pass off so quickly, you're not going to sack Hollingsworth very often. Well, with one exception, every one of those starting offensive linemen were on that we're starting for Alabama's SEC championship team last year. Alabama desperately needs to convert here. Look at number two again. Will White, his third interception of the afternoon. He is everywhere today. Gary Hollingsworth can't find him, though, until it's too late until the ball's in the air. Unfortunately, he's finding him too often. Again, Will White just reading Hollingsworth all the way, just drifting, drifting over in the area where he thinks the ball's going to go, and then when it's thrown, he breaks on it. I think the tailback, Lynch, was the intended receiver. There he is. You just caught a view of him in the corner of your screen. Now back to live action. Oh! Matthews fumbled the football, but I think he got it back. It's 45. 12-29 left. Florida 17, Alabama 10. Really important for Florida to put some points on the board right now if they can... put Alabama at greater risk. Still 17 to 10. Anything can happen, obviously, with 12 minutes to go, but... Uh, a score right now, field goal, a touchdown would be incredibly important to the Gators' efforts to win this ballgame. Dexter McNabb. Slip one, slip two. 
to the 40-yard line of Alabama, a gain of six. You could hear the oohs and ahs and groans up here as he slipped one tackle after another. Alabama fans hoping the fullback would go down, but he broke one tackle, two tackles, and now it's a reasonably makeable third and six. The Gators have Alabama back on their heels. Reeling in the fourth period. Offsides. They didn't call it. Matthews has all afternoon. Intercepted. John Sullen. Off the deflection. Intended for Terrence Barber and Sullen's heads up made the interception. And that's the first interception that Shane Matthews has thrown. Let's see if that changes the momentum. Alabama's offense has come a bit unglued in the last several minutes here at Bryant-Denny. Gators still lead by a touchdown. Fans, this is your day. Dolphin Day in Selector Seats Saturday, July 19th. Walk the stadium in Selector Seats, including the club level, and receive special Dolphins gifts. See Dolphin Legends. Take part in a cheerleading clinic, plus giveaways and a barbecue. Dolphin Day in Selector Seats Saturday, July 19th from 10 to 2 at Pro Player Stadium. Great seats still available. Dolphins football. Be part of it. Call 1-888-FINSTICKS or MiamiDolphins.com. It's Summer Drive at your GMC dealer, and we're exceeding your expectations with 3500 total cash back on every 2003 GMC SUV, every Yukon, and every Envoy. Professional-grade engineering. It's not more than you need, just more than you're used to. Get 0% APR for 60 months for qualified buyers on all 2003 GMC SUVs, or get 3500 total cash back. For the best selection of 2003s, see the pros at your local GMC dealers. If you added up all the hours you've spent rebuilding small blocks and boosting horsepower, you would have graduated from UTI by now. And you'd be getting paid for doing what you love. Call 1-800-884-4262 to find out how we can make you one of the best technicians in the world. Universal Technical Institute. somewhat of an unknown uh, defensive back out of Tallahassee and uh, he had three interceptions and ended up being an All-American that year as a sophomore. Oh certainly that game made him an All-American. Yeah, he, uh, he really made some nice gambles uh, coming out of the free safety position to pick off three passes. Uh, he was sensational that day, that's all you can say and uh, he was a big reason we won the game. Uh, Will White at free safety and uh, uh, the, the entire defense played very well that day. Alabama just made a big defensive play in the fourth period, 11.05 left. Crimson Tides, Sullins with the interception. And let's see if Alabama can rediscover its offense. They've gone south here in this better part of the third and through the early part of the fourth have really lost their offense. Robert Jones is hit as he crosses the 30-yard line. Godfrey Miles. Tim Park. Gain of about three or four yards on the first down play. Gators off to a very slow start offensively this afternoon, but they've warmed up here in the second half. They trailed 7-0 at the end of the first half, 10-0 early in the third period. But now the Gators lead by a touchdown. Here's the reverse again to Sanderson. Hollingsworth threw a great block for him. Sanderson has the first down and lots more. 
Monty Grove finally made the tackle at the Florida 44-yard line. That's the second time, Jim, they've run a reverse, and they both work. This time it was more wide open than before. Yeah. This kid Sanderson, tremendously impressive runner. There you see the blocks. Again, Bartley with that responsibility, but he loses containment. Monty Grove almost misses the last saving tackle. Great block up field by redshirt freshman tackle Mark Hammond, or Matt Hammond, rather, who is 25 yards up the field throwing a block. Jones high-stepping his way across the 35 to about the 33-yard line, a gain of about eight. Alabama really needs a touchdown here. Well, they'd love to have a touchdown, but uh, with their place-kicking abilities, they'll take the three with 9.30 to go right here, but they got to make a first down first, and it's second and a healthy two. Alabama gets the first down. Robert Jones running behind the left side of that offensive line. Hammond and Robinette and Schultz. Ball down to the 26-yard line of Florida. Let's check with Steve Babbitt. At the start of this Alabama offensive series, Mark Murray was not in the game, suffering from heat cramps pretty bad, but I've seen that Mark's gone back in the game. Still hot and humid down here. No surprise that Mark is suffering from heat cramps. Back upstairs. Flip-flopping the tight end again, David. Lynch, who's lined up in the fullback spot this time, gets the handoff and gets a couple of yards. Or rather, Martin Houston, the fullback. William Gaines. And Mark Murray were there to make the tackle for Florida. Now we see Dexter Smith substituting for Brad Culpepper. William Gaines in for Mike Brandon. Trying to get some fresh bodies out there to stop this attack. That... Alabama is presenting on offense. Second down and eight, Crimson Tide. They fake the reverse this time, and Robert Jones is tackled behind the line of scrimmage, back to the original line of scrimmage. An outstanding defensive play made by Tim Park. They've run the reverse so successfully on two occasions, and now that's the fake. Hawk with his speed has none of it. Throws the ball carrier for a loss. A huge third down play coming up for Alabama. If they have to settle for three, then they're still a touchdown away from coming from behind and winning the football game. Two field goals won't cut it for Alabama. But plenty of time, 7.35 to go. Pass incomplete. They're going to have to settle for three. It is a hot, humid, sweltering afternoon. The temperature in the mid to upper 80s and even hotter down on the playing surface here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. You have to feel like at this point that whichever of these two teams has the most in terms of physical conditioning for the last 728 is going to win this football game. It's almost a survival contest, isn't it? Doyle going to try a 46-yard field goal. That snap was low, but the kick is good. And the score is 17 to 13. 7.22 left in the fourth period from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We'll get a look at them next Saturday. Monty Duncan will field the ball from the goal line. Duncan goes straight back up the middle and is hammered. Alvin Hope, number 48, on the stop for the Crimson Tide. We have another injured player, and it might be Monty Duncan. Meanwhile, take a look at the scoring summary, which Alabama utilized to cut the Florida lead to 17-13. Florida's defense stiffened down there deep in their own territory and held the Crimson Tide to just three points, and that could be very important as this game progresses because Alabama still needs a touchdown to come from behind. The injured player is number 55 for the Alabama Crimson Tide. That is Antonio London. 
a reserve linebacker out of Tullahoma, Tennessee. Well, you know Steve Spurrier is going to stay with his fast-break offense, even though the Gators need to chew up the clock. He's not about to go in the closet with his offense. He would prefer to run, uh, run the football and dump the football out on small uh, pass routes, possession-type routes, uh, keep that clock running. But you can expect the Gator offense to continue to have the entire playbook open because this game's a long way from settled, and you just can't sit on a 17-13 lead deep in your own territory. And so uh, critically important for the Gators to pick up that first down here. You saw the numbers on Shane Matthews a moment ago. He's 17 for 32. In the second half, Matthews has completed eight of 13. And remember, he misfired on his first three passes in the first quarter. So he's 17 for his last 29 as Steve Spurrier watches closely to the proceedings on the field. Number 55, Antonio London, being helped up in just a moment off the playing surface. 17 to 13. The last time Spurrier was in Tuscaloosa. Again, 1974, his team was on the short end of a 17 to 14 score, and Spurrier had the Gators driving inside the 20-yard line of Alabama with about 40 seconds left and was unable to put it in the end zone. The Gators missed a late field goal that would have tied that game. The last time a Florida team has won here in Tuscaloosa was one year prior to that, 1963, in a game that is considered by many longtime Gators to be one of the, if not the greatest victories in Florida football history, a 10 to 6 Gator victory in 1963. Matthews has Barber wide open, and Barber has a first down at the 35-yard line. Well, I think that makes my point, David. Uh, Steve Spurrier doesn't know how to sit on a football. He has no intention of not doing the passing game. I mean, this is his bread and butter, and look how wide open the Gator receiver was. Nice catch. The ball was thrown low. We're inside seven minutes. Fullback Kelvin Randolph picks up about five yards on first down. Got a fresh body in there to carry the football. Uh, uh, offensive line. That started the game, still in there for the Gators, but they're alternating some backs, trying to get some fresh legs out there to carry that football. Second and five. Florida recovered the fumble. I think it's Hisham Ishmael. At the 37-yard line, McNabb got his bell rung out across the 40. Now that's one of the Spencer drawbacks Hammond. of featuring a passing game. Sometimes even after you do something well, it can still still be dangerous. Sometimes you might tip the ball in the air. Sometimes you might cough it up when you're smashed coming across the middle like that. Alabama's won some fresh troops out of the battlefield on third and six. 535 left in this ball game. Ball is caught again by McNabb, but going to be far shy of a first down. Florida will have to punt, and the crowd roars at Bryant Denny Stadium on fourth down. The Gators manage one first down, bought themselves a little time. Alabama is going to have it back with about 440 down by four points. Jason Haley has punted three times for a 36 yard average. Marshall is deep to receive. Low kick. Takes a Florida bounce. Marshall has it. Marshall goes down at the 23 yard line. Four minutes, 41 seconds left in the fourth quarter. The Gators 17, the Crimson Tide 13. 
And let's take a look at how the score got to where it is right now with 441 left. Alabama got on the board first in the first period. On a busted play, Hollingsworth and Sanderson connected, and Alabama led 7-0 at the end of the first period. Early in the third quarter, Philip Doyle cashed in on a 41-yard field goal. That is after Alabama had some outstanding field position. Then the Gators finally got on the scoreboard in that third period on the touchdown pass from Matthews to Barber. The game was tied on Krzyzewski's 21-yard field goal. The score was 10-10 at the end of three periods of play. And then Jimmy Spencer blocked an Alabama punt. Richard Fain recovered it in the end zone, and that's how the Gators took a 17-10 lead. And finally, Philip Doyle, 46-yard field goal just a few moments ago, cut the Florida lead to 17-13. That's where we are with 4.41 left. And Alabama in possession of the football from their own 23. Play action. And there's Sanderson again. To the 49 of Florida. Sanderson shaken up on the play. Sanderson gets a step on Jimmy Spencer. Will White comes over to help out. Will White, who has three interceptions in this Ball game comes over to help, finally makes the tackle on Sanderson, who's done such an outstanding job all afternoon. As you look at him at the top of your screen right there, you're going to see the play action fake. Sanderson one on one. Look at the break to the inside, then the outside. Just a beautiful move. Has the step, and Hollingsworth delivers the ball, and looks like he got his knee twisted underneath. Watch his knee get twisted right there. Right there, caught in the turf. Big play by Alabama. You see Just him inside grasp, Florida territory. Jim, you saw him grasp his left knee. Uh, you cer certainly hope that Sanderson is going to be all right. What a game he has played. Uh, he's an exciting player to watch. Uh, that man has got to be wondering how many more injuries his team can sustain. So Ann Stacy injured last week, not expected to play for the rest of the season. Our outstanding defensive lineman Eric Curry was out of practice sessions for much of this past week, although Curry has played in this game. I think the coach realizes that this is a very serious injury. Oh, that's just extremely unfortunate. This kid has just been super all afternoon, and now it looks like he might not only be out today, but he might be out for quite a time. Well, anytime you see a knee situation like that you I think you automatically fear the worst and certainly hope for the best Sanderson going to get a good look over in the locker room and we'll give you an update on his situation just as soon as we can only a junior uh, reminds you a lot of Lee McGriff who uh, was such a great receiver for the Florida Gators. Does color commentary on the Gator radio network. Runs precise routes. Catches everything that's thrown at him. He's out for the afternoon. Meanwhile, Alabama has pushed it across the 50-yard line. A handoff to Robert Jones. Jones is sidewiped by Huey Richardson after Will White. Began to make the tackle. Huey Richardson fighting his way upfield, then turns back, hustles back to make the tackle. Brad Culpepper forced the ball carrier outside. Four minutes left. Alabama needs more than a field goal. Barna coming with the blitz. Hollingsworth has time. The ball oh, is incomplete. What a great defensive play again. And again, it's Will White who shook the ball loose from the intended receiver Lamont Russell what a beating Lamont Russell's taking he's just getting hit series after series right there the ball bounced off his chest into the air gave Will White a chance to make up some lost ground and deliver the hit but almost popped that ball up where it could have been intercepted 
And remember, Alabama's got Georgia next week in Athens. This team is going to know what was in a football game today. Both of these ball clubs will. Big third down play. And they go to their big play man, Lamont Russell, who hauls it in, and Alabama gets the first down. Richard Fain making the tackle, but Russell finds that seam, turns around. Before Fain can break on the ball, there he bounces off the linebacker. A little bit of a push. Excuse me, it was actually Fain had him man for man locked up. When you see a tight end beat a cornerback as good as Richard Fain, you know the kid's got a lot of talent. Look at that, 87 career catches third in University of Alabama history. Pretty good company. Kevin Turner gets a couple of yards to about the 35-yard line. Never got his feet up under him. He stumbled right there and just couldn't make his break after receiving the football, so that, that hurt him. Who do you think leads? Who do you think's one and two in Alabama history in pass receptions ahead of Lamont Russell? Uh, Ozzie Newsom. He's second. And David Bailey. Oh, I, did, I never saw David Bailey play. 69-70-71 for Alabama. Second and nine. 237 left in the fourth quarter. Hollingsworth dumps it. Very intelligent play by Brad Culpepper, who saw Huey Richardson get forced inside, saw the quarterback Hollingsworth skate to the outside, so Culpepper says, hey, I got to help out. He gets out there, gets in the face of Hollingsworth, who thought momentarily he had some open area, forced him to throw the ball away. Now, David, we're looking at third and nine. 233 Al left. Alabama's looking at two down territory here to try and absolutely that's a pick up the first down. They've got good two point. downs to pick up nine yards. And they won't get any on that play. Michael Brandon came firing in from the right side of the Gator defensive line. The stunt. Brandon working on the same side with Mike, Mark Murray. At the top of your screen, Mark Murray. Brandon just simply beats the block to the inside. The tackle had no shot at him at all. Matt Hammond, the young freshman, just got beat right at the snap. Boy, if the Gators ever needed a sack on a series, that was that was one. Is that the first time that Hollingsworth has been caught behind the line today? That might be the first quarterback sack of the game. I, I, I don't can't remember any another others. one. There's been pressure. There's been pressure, but that might be the first time the quarterback has gone down. And as you said, Jim Yarborough, what a critical time for the Gators to come up with that defensive play. And now Alabama has just used one of its three timeouts. So this timeout is not an official timeout or a television timeout. Alabama has used one of its three timeouts right here. So there are two minutes and five seconds left in the football game, and Alabama has fourth down and 15. If they do not pick up the first down, they've got to hope that they can hold Florida on three downs, use those timeouts on Florida's possession to keep the clock from going all the way down on them and then still uh, they would have to score a touchdown so to say that this fourth down play coming up is important is uh, the understatement of the afternoon let's see what uh, defensive coordinator Jim Bates's idea is does he put pressure on does he send people does he attack or does he sit back in an umbrella type of defense send three or his four down linemen and try and defend against the deep pass. Let's see what his decision is. Wembley is wide left. Finkley is wide right. Keep an eye on the tight end, Russell. Rus rushing the four down lineman. Hollingsworth is throwing for Wembley, and Wembley can't make the catch. Money Grow to safety. I think he might have just touched it. Just broke on the ball. An excellent route. Prince Wembley had a step for a moment. Looking center field. 
Top right. You see Monty grow, break, break. Oh, right there. He's a big, tall kid, too, and he needed every inch and then to, add to leap up and knock that one away. Jim, to add insult to injury, Wembley is injured. Is he? Yeah. Oh, that's too bad. Barn has got the football with 157 left. Alabama has two timeouts left. They go to the running game, and Eric Rett, who gets nothing on first down. Alabama has two timeouts remaining. And let's see if they use one of them here. They are going to stop the clock with 145 left. There you see young Monty Grow. 6'3", 208 from Inverness. Bryant-Denny Stadium is beginning to empty with 145 left. A scene that you don't see too often here in this town. Alabama fans leaving early. And their team down by four points. And uh, one of the things that you've got to look at right here is that Alabama, since 1903, has lost its first two games of the season four times. 19, the last time was 1984. Before that, 1956, then 55, then 49. Well, this is an excellent Alabama team. They've just had the misfortune of uh, turnovers, interceptions, and today the critical block punt. You know, that was a specialty team play. Uh, no reflection on their offense or defense. They just, on the specialty teams, gave up a big seven. You can't do that against a quality opponent like the Florida Gators. The Gators come out throwing. How about that? And Trey Everett has what appears to be a Florida first down. That gives his pass complete. I think Coach Spurrier is trying to get a, as far away from his own end zone as possible. If he has to give the football back to Alabama, he wants to give it to them deep in their own territory. And like I said before, this, this guy doesn't call. know how to go in the closet with his offense. What a gutsy call. Alabama trying to get the football back, but time is running out. The Gators stopped the clock whenever it went out of bounds, so Bama did not have to use a timeout. Now back to the running game, and Eric Rett picks up two. Let's go down on the field to Steve Babbitt. You know, David and Jim, as the Gators work on ball control, last week was the home opener, but the season really begins today because the intensity level, obviously, it's a conference game, and, and just the, the, the intensity of the hitting out there, the injuries, the hit by Timmy Falk on uh, the tight end for Alabama, and then the, the play with Sanderson, their good split end gets hurt. So you can tell the intensity is up. The hitting has been ferocious out here. And football at the University of Florida and in the SEC has begun today. Back upstairs. And with 90 seconds left, it appears that the Gators have a pretty good chance of starting out the conference season uh, on the undefeated side of the ledger. But still, you have to consider that uh, a number of things could happen, although it would be unlikely for the Gators to let this one slide away. Thousands of Alabama fans have conceded victory for the Florida Gators, but stranger things have happened, and I'm sure Steve Spurrier and his staff are not uh, declaring victory at this point. A great football game, whichever way it goes. I think you made the key point, Jim, and the difference between these two teams essentially was the special team play of Jimmy Spencer. Right now, that's, that's the difference. Both teams have had chances. Both teams have made mistakes. Both teams have failed to capitalize from time to time. Both teams have capitalized on several occasions. Eric Rett comes near a Florida first down. Clock will continue to roll now. But when you get in big ball games, David, sometimes the difference is one play, you know? One play can make a difference. Coaches preach that all the time. And that one play in this instance was the block punt because really these teams have st stood toe-to-toe -to -toe off on offense and defense Florida comes up with the big plays when they have to have it. 54 seconds left you can see the time in the lower portion of your screen with Florida on top 17 to 13 if they get a first down here it's uh, it's all a moot point Eric Rett probably did not 37 seconds And there's Gene Stallings, a the man who is going to hear, he's going to hear it from the 
football wolves all around the state of Alabama this week. You can guarantee that. Fourth down, but the Gators are not even going to have to stamp the football. That's it. He's happy. His return to Tuscaloosa on a winning note. In 64, he came up three points shy as a young sophomore quarterback. But in 1990, it's a different story. And that is the end of the football game as Steve Spurrier wins his first Southeastern Conference game. 17 to 13, the final score for Bryant Denny Stadium. We'll so it was a 17 13 win. And uh, I remember a local sports writer in Gainesville said uh, what was different about this game is that Alabama played like the old Florida teams used to play, and Florida played like the Alabama teams. Uh, Florida didn't play their best, but somehow or another found a way to win the game. <clears throat> and when it was over, I remember telling uh, a few people, I said, uh, whatever black cloud it hung over Florida football has been blown away. This win has erased all the jinxes, all the curses, all the bad moments. Uh, hopefully from now on it will be clear sailing. And uh, pretty much it was clear sailing after that game.